All right, so welcome to the Hellions broadcast part two. Now, we started off with part one and we got a little bit rambunctious with it. So things are going to be a little bit different little. today. We, we're <laughs> we're going to have we're going to have a set plan, not a just run of the mill. Just oh, we're going to run off our thoughts. We're going to have kind of a set plan today. And joining me is the Steamboat yeah, Willie himself. Last. Uh, the, my friend who shall but not who at this moment shall not be named. He is the Steamboat Willie picture right now. That's what we're using for his because he wants to rename. I am Hey Uwu Kitty. Oh, okay. I will so name myself. He will name yep. himself. He is Hey Uwu Kitty, and he is the Steamboat Willie picture because there's two of us here today. Uh, first and, thing we're you know, yeah. He we're told right. me to pick a picture, so that's yeah, what I told came you to, to pick a picture, and you picked the Steamboat Willie, and I edited it just enough. Well, there's no copyright on the steamboat really anymore. I know, but I still gave him red eyes and yeah. As you should. As I demonized him. I, you know what? I just I just threw demon stuff in there. So because you know it's yeah, the Hellions the Hellions broadcast. But so plan is for today is we're gonna be discussing a couple of different things. So if we don't get the full time in, we're gonna be switching our gears into something else. But for discussion wise. But first off, we're going to be discussing is microtransactions and their impact or, yeah, just the impact on gaming and the gaming community as a whole, not by piecemeal, not by console as a whole. So, Mr. Kitty, would you like to start us off today or do you, do you just want to let me run with it? <laughs> I can start off by pissing off the community, you know, as I always do. Uh, uh, okay, okay. My, you know very... what? You know what, hold on. Let's give you let's give you a, a moment to collect your thoughts, and then we're gonna we're gonna you know, hold on. We we need to ring that bell because you know it is it is the way it is. The hell's my? I swear to God, there it is. All right, there you go, right there. Come on, let's hear it. <clears throat> to an extent, I don't have a problem with microtransactions. Ouch. I think. <laughs> I, to an extent, I think that the existence of microtransactions in certain mannerisms have made the gaming community better. Now, do I want an $80 paywall to unlock Luke Skywalker? No, that's that was stupid. That was a really bad idea. I don't know which. I don't which, which, which... Battlefront Two. Really? Before it, was it got it. It was an it was an eighty dollar. It was an eighty dollar paywall. Really? To yeah. I bought. You, you could theoretically earn him through in-game credits, but it was ridiculous. It was insanely hard to do it, and to to get all of to get everything you would need, it was eighty bucks total. Damn. Yeah, it was an eighty dollar paywall for just Luke Skywalker. You are kind of getting quiet, just so you know. Like it's, I can hear it in the it, audio. It's this headset. It's more clear, but it's quieter. Yeah, because you you start talking yeah. and then all of a sudden just quiet and then back to full volume. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. It just happens a couple of times. I don't know if it's what it is, but at least I'm not air? echoing you yeah. back. This yeah, time. At, least, at least there's no echo. I didn't, you know what, to be honest, I didn't know, you know what, hold on, before we even go any farther, I have a bone to pick with Star Wars Battlefront 2, myself, and it it has to do with the microtransactions. To be honest, here's my thought on microtransactions, as as a whole, as a whole. Microtransactions as a whole, for the most part, uh, games that people say are pay to win, if games are pay to win, the one with the most money wins all the time but here's the other thing with that if you're going to have a kind of pay to win system like that the first company that does this is going to take a real real big step into the world economic market as it is if they include something like here transfer your in-game gold or transfer in-game items and get actual real money for them the first company that actually does that is going to make big bucks really fast because everyone from every single game is going to go into it because if you can make real money by transferring gold and in-game items and it being allowed 
to transfer over to real currency, you're going to make bank on that. Yeah, I mean, Valve has sort of done something like that with Steam. Yeah. They have certain items and stuff that you can sell in their marketplace on select games, yeah. <clears throat> mainly like hats on Team Fortress 2. It's stupid, but it's there. Um, <laughs> but <clears throat> what you're talking about is more like, have you seen the anime Sword Art Online? Yes, I have. There's a lot of, there's a lot okay. of animes that do that. Season 2. Uh, Gun Gale Online mm -hmm. is said to have a direct um, in-game currency to real-life currency system. And if you remember, <clears throat> Sinon, Asada Shino, mm -hmm. is paying her college tuition by playing that game. And taking bounties, if I remember it. Yeah, taking bounties and everything and getting paid by treasure hunters to protect them, stuff like that. So you're talking more along that lines. Yeah, yeah, but I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah, that's more of a that's more of a side rant for me right off the bat, but <clears throat> Yeah, to, where to, you can you can like get rare items. Yeah, if you're like, and if you're like sell here, them to the in-game currency, and then translate that in-game currency profit that you made off that item yeah. to real-life currency. Yeah, yeah. Because then, because then you'd be like, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna put this on the marketplace, or I'm gonna transfer this back to the company so that they can have it back because I don't need it, I don't want it, I don't, I can't use it, whatever," and get 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 partial money back. Like e even just part, even partial money would be great if you're making more because it's a rare item. And it's an item that just doesn't pop up very often and you're making more that way. If it's a loot system and it's a random like mystery box chance and you get that item based on it. Why not? But microtransactions as a, as a, as a whole, like pay to win systems, I think are really, really dumb. It stops the like nine to fivers, the children, everyone that's not making big bucks. Like if you're a huge content creator and you're making a ton of money, this is not against content creators in general, but if you're a content creator and you're making a ton of money or you are a millionaire or whatever, and you have a ton of money to just blow on a video game. Yeah. That kind of is unfair to the 90%, 90 other percent of people playing the game because yeah. Um, big, well, I didn't know about Skywalker, but uh, one of the things in Star Wars Battlefront 2, like within like two weeks of the game's release, this the game. What now? This is a story that I have talked about before on a different platform, but with Star Wars Battlefront 2 starting out, it had uh basically loot crates to, to an extent, and the game wasn't even out for three days. I'm playing it. I get on it for the first time because I always wait a couple of days when a game releases for the most part because the servers just get way overloaded right off the bat. And if you wait a couple yeah, of I days, I usually spend the first couple of days playing the single player campaign. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everything. Yeah, that before right. I just dive into the multiplayer. Yeah. Yes. So the game, the game at the time wasn't even out for a week. I get in there and to be honest, what pissed me off more was first couple of like, like so many games in all of a sudden i get slapped out of nowhere by uh the tl50 repeater okay. and uh at the at, for battlefront 2 it is just a basically heavy assault rifle well, no heavy machine gun essentially blaster essentially um it doesn't have any attachments nothing it didn't have any of that i don't think at the time but i go the end of that game I go and look to see how this person got it. Cause I know you can unlock it normally. I look and it's like 400,000 kills with a heavy blaster. And I'm like, there's no way. I don't care how many you, if you played all seven days, there is no way you got 400,000 kills with just a heavy blaster. It, it's very unlikely. Yeah. And what's worse is that the, the, the person the only reason why I also knew that is because the character that was being played wasn't max level or even close. It was like a level 15 character, which means that you got 400,000 kills and you're only level 15. Nah, that, no, that not does not. Yeah, that does not compute. It wasn't even like I was like, 
I go and look. I'm like, oh, he bought and spent money on the loot crate system, got end game, literally end game weapons. I asked, I, I sent, I sent them, I sent the, the, the player a message. I'm like, how much money did you spend? I get back like, oh, I used my mom's credit card. I'm like, so you're fucking 16 years old. Like, no, I'm 12. I'm like, I'm like, how many boxes did you open? Five. I'm like, nope, nope. I stopped playing. Like I, I put the game away for six months. I did not touch it. I was so unhappy with that because if a kid can buy five crates, good for him though. I mean, five crates in and gets the most end game awesome weapon that you can get at the time. Good for fucking him. Yeah, because they nerfed the cycler rifle. Something's fierce between uh, leaving the first game. Yeah, but still, I mean, the cycler game, rifle in the first game was nasty. Yeah, it was a guaranteed one shot kill, but it was also a powered weapon, so you could use it. You you would use it once, yeah. and it was a one shot, and then you would have to get that one shot, and then it would recycle. Yeah, but, but they brought but, it back. But it penetrated as an actual weapon. Yeah, but it, they, they still brought it back as an and actual they took weapon. The shield penetration away from it and ruined it. Yeah, so they should have just left it as powered. But yeah, go ahead. So I yeah, was upset. Five loot crates. I, yeah. yeah, if you get five loot crates in and you get an end game weapon, I mean, a kid had massive luck. But that absolutely turned me off the game because it's just like if you can earn that normally and you can go ahead and spend like like I'll go and I didn't even do this, but I would have gone and been like spent like 10, 15 dollars and got or, or yeah. 20 bucks and gotten like 20 crates or whatever it was at the time. And I would not have gotten a single good weapon like yeah. end game weapons would have not have come for me. And that's what triggers yeah, me. The, if, the RNG if a game, just doesn't typically cooperate. Yeah. If your it's, it's game is thing. mostly cosmetic with microtransactions, I will absolutely wholeheartedly get the hell behind that because cosmetics are cool. If I want to spend 15 bucks on something, kind of like the way Overwatch, not the, you know, but yeah. kind of like the way Overwatch does it. Yeah. They do cosmetics. It doesn't have anything to do with the game. Cosmetic. It does not affect gameplay at all. Yeah. And when correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't. I haven't put a single second into Overwatch 2 after they straight up lied about the purpose of it. Yeah, but, I did. I did. I did a little bit, but uh, but yeah. with microtransactions, like, OK, another another good example of microtransactions. This would have actually brought me back to said game. OK, I have been off Destiny 2 for about three years now. Or four years like it is ridiculous i have not touched the game i do not like it i do not like the company but i out of nowhere had seen a retweet from mass effect which is to be honest one of my favorite games we talked yeah, about we, we, this. For those of you that have listened to the previous podcast those are our two favorite game the two the two of us we love the game we love the series mass effect was coming to destiny 2 i was like okay let's go let's go it's the only thing that'll bring me back for about a month I install the game and they're like, oh yeah, you have to buy the new edition, the current edition of the game. I'm like, I'm not 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 spending more money than I have to. If if you had let me play with the older version of the game, not the current, because I'm pretty sure the older version still had was still available as maps wise. Yeah, I would have been like, oh, OK, you can still have the older version and log into the game server and play. Yeah, if I could have gone into the game and with the old with the older version and just and actually just played those maps, I wouldn't have cared about anything else because then I would have gone in, bought the stuff, gotten everything for Mass Effect, played it for like a month or two, maybe. And then left like I would have given you money for that, like it, because it was basically cosmetic because it was a ship. It was a ghost. It was skin and character designs. And yep. I don't and there was the, the Omni Blade as well. Like the Omni Blade was the melee weapon for I don't remember which character. I think it was for all of them. It was the smacking. So yeah. I would have gone in, bought that, used it for a while, enjoyed myself, and left. Because it's cool. I'm a fan of the service. I'm a fan of the game. I'm not a fan of Destiny 2. But they would have gotten me for that singular moment. Like no, buy the new game, which is at the time, which is right now sixty bucks, or forty or whatever. And I was like, nope, not not doing that. I'm not gonna buy the game for forty. Play it for a month and move on. Yeah, it's just not worth my time and effort. 
So things like that, if you have a microtransaction system that is cosmetic based, I can absolutely get behind that because cosmetics are cool. Everyone will agree with that. You can run around with a skin that no one else has that is not released anymore, not available anymore. Super rare skins. Fortnite is an excellent example of this. They do not, their cosmetics do nothing to the game. Okay, let me rephrase that because I know what I'm thinking right now. They do nothing technically to the game. You can still yes. use the skins. They in can adjust visibility. Ways. Yeah, they yeah. use them various different ways because, again, but that's up play to the player how you use the skin. Yes, because you know, I've it's seen not the... like this skin gives you, you know, automatically regenerating chills or the skin gives you regenerating health or extra stats or makes you run faster. Yes. They don't do any of that. Yes. It's uh, all this skin's green, so it's easier to hide in trees with. That's not on purpose, but a player can use that. That's different though. Yeah. One and okay. As as I, as I know that for those of you that have played Mass Effect 3, you all know this. Mass Effect 3 had a loot box system that you could theoretically spend money on, but you could also earn it through in-game credits by doing various missions and opening them that way. That is all, and, but that also did... And then that got copy and pasted to Andromeda when it's multiplayer. Yeah, when it was like basically yeah. multiplayer only at the time. Yeah. One of the biggest things that... It, that I enjoyed with that. So I got a couple of, well, microtransactions again. I mean, it it brought like things of life to the game uh, with that because depending on what crates you got, you could get a specific character that is really, really high level, or you could get a bunch of random crap. At the time of playing the game, I enjoyed myself so much that I, I honestly didn't care because by the time I got involved in the multiplayer uh, aspect of Mass Effect 3, it was so deep into its life cycle that it didn't really matter that everyone else already had them. Yeah. And two of my most favorite characters that unfortunately are on 360, which means that I don't have access to that anymore. I still have my 360, but... And the multiplayer didn't get put in the Legendary Edition. Yes, no, so. that that I'm upset about. That that I wish they actually did, because that, that would have both been super helpful, and I would have spent even more money on the game than I already did. I would have enjoyed it a lot more, because bringing that, that multiplayer aspect back, I mean, sure, it was a lot of the same maps over and over and over again, you can still go on EA right now on, I believe, for Xbox, because they have backwards compatibility, you can still play the old games. The servers are still up. Um, 360 servers, I believe, are down. They're down Especially now. the math. Yeah, especially the, the ones for Mass Effect. If the game has been re-released in any way, then yes, the servers will be completely down for them. But I think there's only like three or four 360 games that still have their servers. Well, on PC, I know that if you do it on EA from there and you upload and you play Mass Effect 3 from EA there, the servers you can still access, but you don't carry anything over from your Yeah, Xbox. but that's not for 360. That's yeah. on PC. Yeah, the I PC knew, version. I, of the I knew the PC version did it because I, I, still, I still do play it for a while. But yeah, there's actually no server anymore. What they did was they updated the code to where it's just direct peer-to-peer -peer now, and you just connect to their server to connect to each other. The way the original Xbox ran with its online, where there were no servers for the games. There was just a connection server that routed the different games to allow people to connect to each other. But somebody did have to be the host, and it ran off their internet. Oh, well. I don't think yeah, that, that, that that's how that peer to peer server system works. I I don't think that it does that for current because I think they updated that because it's a security risk now for peer to peer. Uh, if it goes through a third party server like that, they can mask the IP addresses. But I do get how that could be a yeah um, no. a security threat. It's it's, it's if the proper it, protocols are not in place. Yeah yeah. 
But, and even then, nothing is hack proof. The only thing, the only way to keep your computer hack proof is to never connect it to the internet. <laughs> yeah, no, and everything's on the internet. Yeah. A lot of games like that, I mean, it's just every game nowadays, you have to have an internet connection. It doesn't matter. You can't just like, oh, yeah, I'll install it, play it, and play it offline. Oh, no. Because discs are no longer a thing. Most things are digital now. I mean, sure, there are still people who get physical copies. That's why the Xbox Series X has a disc tray. That's why the PlayStation 5 yeah. has a disc tray. PCs yeah, do I'm not. looking at my Series X right now. PCs typically do not have disc trays now, yeah. Yeah, not anymore. Because you can get everything for digital on a PC. Yeah, I mean, they don't... I mean, you go to Walmart, they don't even sell... Discs anymore. PC, game, PC discs anymore, because they're just not being used. Steam has killed that market. It's... That's even funnier. Hold on. So that actually brings up an excellent point. Uh, recently, and this tells you how I recently. Right, before we move on, before we move on, hold that thought, please. <laughs> You're sliding around. I want to. I want to. Well, I want to go back to your uh, microtransaction thing about the about it being purely cosmetic. Okay being the best the best way for microtransaction system to work i think a purely cosmetic one that it that that does work because it doesn't affect the game in any way but just visually yeah but let me make a counterpoint for the in-game items being microtransaction I'm going to go back to a, um, well, it was indie when it came out. It's not indie anymore. They're the company Digital Extremes. Do you know who they are? No. They made the game Warframe. Oh. I know you've heard of Warframe. Yes. Warframe as an in-game, has a paid in-game currency. Yes. Called Platinum. You Absolutely. cannot earn a platinum in the game. You have to spend money on it. It's true. And you, you, but you can spend platinum on any of their bundles, and that's how you can get these bundles. But if you don't want to get the bundles for the new prime suits that are that it, that have come out, you can go and earn them in game. But there is an in game marketplace for platinum where players go on and sell items for platinum so you can theoretically go in you can theoretically go into the game farm out one of these super rare items sell it for a bunch of platinum mm -hmm. and you've got paid currency yeah without buying it i like the way that is done because you like you said the nine to fivers and you know the kids and yeah. People that just don't have a lot of money can go in and actually go farm these items out. And then and turn sell around them for the in game and then turn around, sell them for the in game currency, and then spend that in game currency on whatever they want. Yeah. If they have five, ten bucks here and there for some in game currency, fine, but they can earn the in they can indirectly earn the in-game currency you are, you and are I right like I, I will admit that uh, as, as someone who has actually done that and played warframe for the most part i was yeah. the one always doing the buying because i would if there was a specific warframe and for those of you that are unaware warframe is a free-to-play game as well so you don't really need to spend any money again he has said that but it is free to play yeah. you download it you go and you play you are going to be a little bit behind as far as some of the story wise goes, because a lot of the story is kind of based on each other. So you have to finish them prior before moving on. It's a small issue that I think needs to be addressed, but it also adds to the story as well. So if you haven't finished a previous point that is required, you have to do that first before you can move on. You see, that kind of gets me because I was one of the players that played it when it launched on, a, on Xbox One. Yeah, religiously. I played it day one. Yeah. As soon as it launched on the Xbox One system, I was online on it. 
Yep. So when they updated, got rid of the stamina bar and everything, and classic Warframe players are gonna go, yes, we fucking hated the stamina bar, but hmm. <laughs> when they updated the system and went to that new um, map, I was kind of grandfathered in, and I had those junctions to be completed, but I could still access all the planets. So I was kind of grandfathered in and didn't have to do that because I played it before that was a thing. But I do know the junctions you're talking about that you have to complete before you can move past them to the next planet. Yeah, I was kind of I wasn't one of the original, <laughs> original players from the game. I was after Stamina Bar and everything else. But I think there was a point with the way the grandfathering, grandfathering system worked. Uh, you just had to go... See, what you're talking about is uh, the junctions between the planets. What I'm talking yeah. about is the, the chapters. I don't know if you've been oh, on there recently. You're talking about, the, you're like, talking about the, the, the story missions. The actual story missions. So there, yes. are, there are various like missions and side quests and quests and stuff that all kind of jumble together. You have to start one to get the rest. Started, yes. And you have to finish That's certain ones about. to yeah. move on. And that's what I was talking about. The junction missions aren't really that hard because the ones that to get from Some planet, of them are. to get from planet <laughs> to planet, they're technically not that hard. They're only I think the highest one was the bosses. Those were the hardest ones. And technically you didn't need to do those to, to move on to the next planet. You just had to do the one prior that connected to the next planet. But yeah, no, as far as Warframe's microtransaction system, to be honest, what they did is correct. I would, and this is where they kind of stepped up. So one of the things that they do, actually two of the things that they do, is that they have two different bundles that both cost $80 and 60 or 70 The 60 or 70 one gives you uh, an in-game, let's call, let's call it a back bling, so to speak. It's basically a cape or whatever. It just it goes in the back of your Warframe and it just goes there. I believe they call it a Sindana. Yes, they call That's it a Sindana, but thing. that... Yeah. It's 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 a better description for everyone else that doesn't actually play the game. It's basically a back bling. I only put about you know twelve hundred hours into that game. So. Yeah, I'm not gonna go with mine because that's just ridiculous. <laughs> um, actually, it's probably more than that. Like I don't know how to for work. both of us probably. If you want me through the process on the Xbox of how to look at my hours played, I'll I'll go look it up. We both could. I we could we we wouldn't even need to. We just go to achievements, look at hours played. Okay, let's do it real quick. Hold on. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, I can't do it on mine because... Yeah, I'll do, to, it. I'll do it. That's fine. But he is right. The way the transaction system works is that you can buy platinum, which is the in-game currency, and then use it with in-game players that have farmed out an item or have duplicates of the item. And... They're like here, I just want to make some platinum so that I can buy this, this, and this, all new stuff. And the things usually cost, depending on what you're buying, is anywhere from 100 platinum to like 500 platinum or 1,000 platinum. But that takes a lot of stuff to trade in. And if you have a rare item, for the most part, you can also, and this is the best thing about the system, is that player to player, you can negotiate. Like they'll say, like, like you'll ask them how much. They'll be like, oh, 65 for this. I'm like, I, can we can we drop it down a little bit? Like, you can actually learn to go negotiate with the players because they want to get rid of the item. They want platinum. You want the item. You want to use your platinum. But you can also, like, hard negotiate. It, it's really, really nice because it, it does do that. Like, you can do that, and it's fantastic because it's not just, oh, hey, yeah, no, this is 75 platinum. We're going to sell it for 75 platinum. That's what's required, everything else. No, it doesn't do that. It actually separates it out. And okay. with the two bundles being at seven or eighty and eighty or seventy, it's it's two different bundles. One's the least expensive, one's more expensive. One has a prime warframe, and then every time they release a new one, that's what the prime warframe is. You can buy it once, get the warframe and everything that comes with it, weapon, skin. Just about a bunch of other stuff and a bunch of platinum. 26 and a 26, 2650 platinum, which is a lot of platinum, mind you. And you can use it for almost anything in there. So, what are the hours? Okay. 
your hours are th is 37 days and 37 minutes. Man, you're going to make me do math, aren't you? I, that's just the way it gives it to me, all right? Okay, hold on. Let me do 37, 37 divided by 24. Not that way. Wait a minute. 37, is it Multiply. 37? Yeah, I was like, Multiply. wait a minute. I was like, wait a minute, not divide, multiply. Yeah. All right, so plus 37 minutes. So I'm at 925 minutes. Okay. Do, do, do you want to know my hours? Pardon. Nine, uh, 900, 900, hold on. I fucked up. So 24 hours times 37 days is... Okay, so I have 888 days, or 888 hours. That's what I'm at. Okay. I'm at 84 days, 10 hours, 54 minutes. 84 days times 24. So you're at plus 10 hours. So you're at 2,026 hours. Almost 2,027. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I have I have personally spent significantly less time in the game than he has, and I'm talking significant. But at the same time, <laughs> he has played Den since day one since it released. So yeah, that's, that's kind of add that all together. I got yeah. into it like years after it, like a, quite a while after it released. So uh, with yeah, I was playing Warframe one day, and they were like, "Yeah, come celebrate Warframe's fifth anniversary on Xbox," and I'm like. Wait, huh? really? Huh? <laughs> it ain't been no five years. Oh, look at fuck. It's been five years. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, with, like, all that stuff, like, they do different things. Like, they have a valent, like, they do Valentine's Day, which they give you for free. They give you free items there uh, or yeah. stuff that literally costs one credit, which is, like, the easiest thing in the world to get is one credit. And that's what they put it at. They're like, here, it's Valentine's Day or it's Halloween or it's St. Patty's Day. Yeah. Like, they do all of them. And they're like, here, for everyone, one credit which everybody has because one credit is one credit. There's no way you don't have a credit. Yeah. A singular credit, which is because I enemies think drop. You can get a singular credit. Enemies no, drop them. You because, know, because enemies drop. Yeah, I was about depending, to say. Like, depending on their level. <laughs> yeah, two, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. I've seen a thousand, but. If you get uh three hours into a survival mission oh it's on ridiculous. warframe they are dropping 70 80 000 a piece like it's stupid <laughs> oh it wasn't always like that because i did a uh, four hours in a uh, survival and they weren't dropping nearly that much they might were, were you doing survival or def or defense Survival is when you have the um, the oxygen tanks you have to run and hit every now and again. Yeah, we were doing defense is when you're guarding the objective in ways. I know, I know, you. I know. I did a really, really long defense. I know I did a really, really long survival. Yeah. But anyway, microtransaction system. You okay? <laughs> as <laughs> at, here, my wife. Actually, I was just sitting. I'll be what you expect. No, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I want I want to tell you something. So the first game to ever ever have microtransactions, can, do you know what it is? No, absolutely okay. not. So for all of you guys out there that played this game, straight up, go screw yourself, okay? Because this is your fault. <laughs> the first I probably ever. <laughs> The first <laughs> microtransaction sold by a major publisher was in 2006 when Bethesda sold horse armor in Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion for $2.50. I it had was, the horse armor. On the hold on. Hold on. I ain't even <laughs> done. It was made as an experiment to test the market's reaction to DLC. Now... They should not count it as DLC because it was cosmetic and it didn't it didn't technically add anything. It was uh, downloadable content. You paid for it, then you downloaded it. 
you did that for a lot of stuff like extensions like yeah. uh, like expansions to the game that was downloadable content too that's why i'm saying like we should kind of differentiate yeah. these between the two but most players reacted negatively claiming the two dollars and fifty cents for an in-game cosmetic was too much now let's talk about how dumb we are today like eighty dollars for luke skywalker <laughs> Like, we're talking 2006. It is now 2024. That is 18 years later. Almost Granted, the Luke Skywalker thing was almost, a, almost a quarter of a century later. God, I'm old. Yeah. Or, or a fifth of a century later. We are now spending $20 for some of the most average cosmetic bundles. And cosmetic stuff 20 bucks and in 2006 we were smarter and decided to say two dollars and fifty cents for in-game horse armor was too effing much hmm. what happened that yeah, everyone I say, just decided to say yeah. oh yeah no 20 bucks is okay yeah, I gotta say, I I recently spent fifteen bucks in Fortnite because I wanted the Goku Black skin because See. he's my favorite because he's my favorite villain from Super. Yeah, no. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's yeah. what the hell happened to us that we all just said, "Oh, okay, this is fine." Capitalism, inflation, like. I, Inflation, capitalism. The companies st started realizing that they could re that they could raise those prices and fluctuate them around, and people would eventually deal with them. Yeah, no, it, they're, they're like here yeah. Be because the biggest thing. I mean, it's it's, it's the dumbest thing because <laughs> I I want to read the whole thing. Like it, it's it's it it actually in the late 1990s with the rise of popularity of the internet. People began downloading video game content online. Video game developers and hobbyists would sell or share expansions to PC games as downloadable content or DLC. 2002, Microsoft released Xbox Live, the online platform for Xbox, which allowed purchase players to purchase DLC from it. And that's when Oblivion came in. Despite the negativity, the horse armor became the ninth best selling DLC in oblivion which was still being purchased more than two years after it released bethesda and other game studios began using microtransactions more as an extra stream of revenue in 2008 the ios store launched on apple iphones apple bite me and games there use microtransactions as their main source of funding. In the first three years after its launch, I so it's Apple's big fault. It it is partially Apple's. Uh, Google is also to blame. Well, Google only got into that game after Apple decided, oh hey yeah, let's do this because we're making a shit ton of money. Because it yeah, but when Apple was making a lot of money off of it, Google came in and escalated it, especially after they bought YouTube. Well, that, yes, that's but, when they got really bad. Okay, so. It, in the first three years after its launch, iOS apps had made over $3.6 billion, billion, with a B, mm -hmm. in revenue with over 15 billion downloads and 80% of that revenue coming from mobile games. In an attempt yeah. to capture the success of microtransactions in mobile games, developers have added more microtransactions in PC and console games. So in 2008, at 2010, iOS was causing such a big stir that everyone's like, oh, yeah, no, this is great. Let's keep going. Ayo. Uh, yeah. So uh, the first time, well, let's let's uh, some some of the different versions of like, let's call them microtransactions. Loot boxes are a big thing. So uh EA, Activision, Blizzard, and Capcom, they're generated, uh, has been, they, they estimated to generate up to $30 billion in 2018 alone, which is with this amount rising to $50 billion in 2022. So $30 billion in 2018, they damn near doubled that almost four years later. Actually, four years later. And to be honest, in 2018, 
uh, that was pre-COVID for everyone. So pre-COVID 2018, $30 billion. Not a huge problem because everyone really wasn't spending a lot of time playing video games. They'd miss out on some of those microtransactions or those limited like people, characters that go away after a while. Uh, a year later, COVID happened in 2019 and it just kept going from there. At that point, it was game over and we were screwed. But uh, some of the loot boxes, things like that, like Star Wars Battlefront 2, irony enough with that loot box system that they were running, which again, we all had kind of a real problem with, was that in various countries, they started banning the game and blacklisting the game only because the loot boxes were considered gambling. And in some of those yeah. countries, gambling is illegal. So yeah. they had to start banning the game. So Overwatch has been able to get around that because they're not getting technically in-game loot. Yeah. And you don't buy the loot boxes anymore. You earn them. Yeah. So Overwatch well, I mean, and Activ Blizzard got around that with that. But with Star Wars Battlefront 2 and EA, they're like, now nah, we're just going to take it out. So they took it all out. And the games were allowed back into those countries that said, okay, yeah, no, this doesn't have this anymore. Okay. Yeah. So. And the Battlefront 2 thing, the, the, the one of the reasons that they took that out was because. Of how addicting, because it's, it's like gambling. No. The head of Disney at that time, I believe, was Bob Iger. Okay. And the head of Disney went down because of all of the um, negative press Star Wars was getting. The head of Disney went down to EA headquarters. And just said, take it out. Walked in to the uh, secretary room, to the, you know the waiting room for to meet with the CEO. Yeah, where they were having a meeting, and he said, "Is the CEO in?" And the secretary said, uh, "Yes, sir, but he's in a meeting. You can't go in there." He looked at the secretary and said, "I'm Bob Iger. I go where I want." And <laughs> walked through the and walked in through the doors and interrupted their fiscal meeting to tell them that they are going to fix this and they're going to take it out, <laughs> basically. And yeah, <laughs> and it was funny. So he basically walked in there with the biggest strut he could ever have and said, nah, it was a good idea for half a second. Now you're taking it out. That, that interaction actually is what caused Disney to pull uh, gaming exclusivity, develop, gaming development exclusivity away from EA. Because EA. EA had exclusivity for Star Wars games. Yeah. Only they were allowed to move Star Wars games. And that got pulled away because of that. I mean, were they still sharing? Like the the question is, were they sharing that revenue with Disney? Uh, they better have been. <laughs> they better have been. I mean, Disney's making a ton yeah, of money in Star Wars, but it, oh yeah, Disney would have sued the crap out of them. Have, were they <laughs> if they weren't sharing the revenue stream, paying the royalties and everything? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could pay but, royalties, but it you there's. I think the royalties are based on how they're used. It's not based on yeah. how many items are made. So. Say they're using their royalty on 25 items and they need to pay royalty on that. They only have to pay royalty on those 25 items, not how many, much money they make from giving those 25 items out as loot box stuff because you get duplicates and everything else. Yeah, but when you're making a franchise game, that, that it's a little different than royalties, you know. I used, I know I'm the one that said royalties, it, it wasn't royalties, the, like you said, revenue stream. I, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I don't know how it all works. I'm, I'm more curious to find that out than anything right now. But so it, here's the other thing What's with that. What's funny like, is not the first time EA has pissed off a, company. a major company. company. Major client. Let's is, go with that. Major client. But that is the first time it was their fault. <laughs> the first time it was uh, Nintendo. Oh, it's a, it's a Nintendo. Nintendo's not that easy. Again, Nintendo's Did not you that notice? easy to piss them off. Did you notice in the early 2000s, um, all EA Sports games dropped off Nintendo platforms for a few years? No. They just disappeared. No, I didn't Yeah, notice. we used to have, like, you know, 
Madden NFL on the Wii and everything, and then all of a sudden, boom, no EA titles on any Nintendo system for years. It's actually a funny story. <laughs> no, I didn't. What? What? We're gonna get off track here. So, what? What did EA? Now, EA is notorious for pissing people off. Yeah, but what but could they have done? Wasn't their fault. What could they have possibly have done that pissed off Nintendo so bad? First off, you've got to understand Nintendo sets launch titles for their for their services. Yeah, for their services. If you want to launch a game on, on Nintendo, you either have to let Nintendo tell you when you're launching the game, or you have to clear your launch title. Like, you don't just say, hey, we're launching on this day. Because Nintendo doesn't want anything competing with, like, Mario or Zelda or Pokemon, you know. They don't want that. It's Nintendo, but you know. For sales. Which I, I get. You Actually, know, technically, that's not, not true. It's not that they don't want com- competition. They just don't yeah. want games releasing within a certain time period of, like, Mario, Pokemon, and other stuff. Because they understand people have budgets, and they can only buy so many games at a time. Yes. And if they have to make a choice, they don't want the choice to be really difficult. Yeah, they want their they game bought. They don't want bought. the choice to be... Yeah, they want their game bought. Which, I get that. That's a bit controlling for me. At, but at, anyway, at the time period, it was that. different. Uh, sorry, it wasn't the Wii. It was the Wii U. Wii U? Era, the Wii U era. Okay. Because now that I'm going through the story in my head, it, it was the Wii U. Nintendo had released the Wii U, and people were bashing it, calling it, you know, crappy, underpowered, everything, you know. Well, it kind of was. But the not- Wii U was actually a little beast for what it was. Did it keep up with the systems it was competing against? No. No. God, no. But was it a little powerhouse? Yeah. But you can say the same I thing mean, about Game Boys. Saw the Zelda tech demo of Link with the spider. That looked beautiful. But, yeah. But anyway, the Wii U was new. Nintendo, and I'm not 100% certain this is an accurate story, but this is the way I know it happened. That I think it happened because I've, from articles and stuff I've gathered around. Nintendo contacted EA and said, hey, we want you to make a a tech demo to show off the fact that the Wii U actually has some power to it. Mm-hmm. And EA said, okay, we'll do it. So they got the Wii U and started fiddling around with it, and they thought, oh, we're going to break this thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to throw prices on it. <laughs> Not only did it run, but they could lock the frame rate, and it was smooth. It was beautiful. So once they locked the frame rate, they, they was fine. Yeah, they could lock the frame rate at 30 frames per second, which, you know, was completely bearable for Wii U yeah. era. We're not getting into the frame rate debate. No, no. <laughs> but not today. No, not today. But not today. They, they said, okay, well, this is great. So they started working on a version of Crisis. For the Wii U, they were going to call it Crisis Two. It was going to feature full, you know, full inventory customization and everything, weapon attachment on the fly, like Crisis had. It was going to be on the tablet that you hold and play with. It was going to be beautiful. It was going to use both screens. And they went to win. They went back to Nintendo and said, "Hey, um, we were actually kind of impressed with it, so we're going to put Crisis on it." Um, what's our launch window and when can we start advertising? And Nintendo said, we don't want Crisis. What, what did they want then? They wanted a tech demo to show off the power of the system. Not Crisis. So, and EA got kind of offended that, you know, 
this <laughs> Japanese company just told them, no, <laughs> we want you to make a demo, a tech demo. We don't want your game. Man, that is a, that it's really, you know, what? I'm going to be honest. That, so if, EA pulled all their titles off Nintendo for a while. Oh, yeah, well, that's that, that would be their choice as well with that. I mean, they're back now. EA is doing business with Nintendo now. Yeah, because I've mean, seen the titles there, but. But there so, was a couple years there that it was kind of like a cold war of waiting on an apology, I guess. I don't know. And it was over Crisis. Oh, my God. Because wow. you, you remember when Crisis came out. I remember. Um, yeah. High-tier gaming PCs could not run this game. They, could, they, were sh they were becoming large paperweights. Yeah. Like, it, it was breaking high-tier gaming PCs but just because of minimum you know requ system requirements yeah but the wii u could actually run it at a locked frame rate at a locked 30 frames per second and ea was so impressed they wanted it on there and nintendo didn't want it they didn't want crisis on their system so technically it wasn't nintendo or ea's fault ea just said no we're upset now because you just, a, you, you... yeah it was kind of like a, a double miscommunication on both parts you know, I, I, here's the other thing with that. I mean, like, if EA had said, oh, hey, you know, this game, we're impressed with the, with, with your platform here because, or your console here, because this game, Crisis 2, is making bricks of high-tier gaming PCs at the time. Crisis 1 was making bricks of PCs when it came and, out. <laughs> and yeah. we're so impressed because we can lock the frame rate and it runs smooth. We want yeah. to put this game on here because of how smooth this actually is. Let me just say real quick to anybody listening, I am not an industry insider. I just do a lot of research. and He just knows a lot. I, I just know a lot. I just yeah. I do a lot of research and I read around. I don't believe anything I read on the internet until I read it from multiple sources. Absolutely. And That's the way it should be. Even then, I still don't believe it completely, you know? Yeah. Until, until the, the companies come out and say, hey, yeah. I read from multiple sources. So, yeah. I'm, I, I was just putting that out there. I'm not an in industry insider. Don't don't start calling me that. I wish I was, <laughs> but I'm not. I, you know, we both wish we were, to be honest. I do have a little pull with certain companies with <laughs> beta testing and stuff. But that's it. And NDA, NDA. Oh no, I can. I, I can say and they, and they, they, I just can't talk about what games or game companies. I can state that there are some that I have a little bit of beta pool with yeah. that I get invited from for their beta games. I'm not going to say who it is, but it's been a while since I've yeah. uh, since I've got one of those. But yeah, so back to I got my last moment. <laughs> <laughs> Back to back to back to loot boxes and microtransactions. We, yes. We've had a we've had a little rant there. So yeah, I, I interesting really, EA Nintendo story there that yes. may or may not be completely true, but that's just what I gathered. But here's the thing: so with Overwatch, they they did they did uh, with, with actually with Star Wars. So were the gambling and everything else. It became an addiction for some people. They they would spend money, 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 and it, oh yeah it became an addiction like it actually became actual gambling because it, it turned into an addiction so like here's an actual here's here's the whole thing like loot boxes and all since the uses of loot boxes allowed gaming companies to earn high profits in unregulated market this has led the game companies to adopt malpractices to exploit its player base for example since loot boxes feature gambling like mechanics but are not regulated as much by government organizations gaming companies have been able to avoid legality issues concerning loot boxes another issue with loot boxes is that they are highly addictive case in point as it provides gamers with a sense of accomplishment with winning an item. Also, because when opening a loot box, it is addictive in some way by the way they are presented, such as use of glittering, cheerful sound effects, uh, CSGO, we're talking to you, and other, <laughs> other animations. And <laughs> this, <And> compels <laughs> <laughs> this compels players to uh, keep purchasing these microtransactions until they get what they want. 
because it gets to be seen as exciting in response to their addictive aspects. Some countries have regulated how loot boxes can be sold. In 2016, China announced legislation. This is China we're talking about again, a communist country that required companies to publish the draw probability of all virtual items. You know what? I'm that we're and that was, you know what, right there. Good good for China. One good thing that uh, some of the good things that came out of China is that cuz we all at the time of like different loot boxes, we all didn't know what the like availability or the the uh, the, the odds, the ratio of what you would get out of loot boxes we just kept doing it in hopes that we got what we wanted and with china doing that there were while there are many games out of there that with loot boxes can be earned through gameplay we we all love that several issues arise when randomly dropped items require purchases in order to be obtained because this is because and this is a good example of csgo because they drop uh crates or at least they used to after a while, you would get a crate and you would use a key to open it. Again, you would have to buy the key to open said crate that you earned by playing. And you would randomly get an item in there from the loot, from the loot box. It wouldn't be a guaranteed like certain items. It would be like here, you could get anything from a common item to an ultra rare or a factory new or a uh, slightly used or anything else. And they, no, and they would have stack tracks and other stuff. Like there are stuff, there are guns from CSGO and CSGO 2 that are worth millions of dollars. And it's ridiculous, but they're very, very rare weapons. So uh, with this, this is because in-game items tend to become limited, which encourages grinding, pushes players to purchase microtransactions to skip these steps and save time. Uh, this also leads to cases where customization uh, built options in the game are limited as game companies are motivated to lock content behind loot boxes to earn more profit. For case in point with his, Luke Skywalker. Now, I didn't know Luke Skywalker required an $80 purchase. I purchased the most expensive edition at the time. I unlocked all the characters that were available at launch, which means Luke Skywalker, General Grievous, Yoda, and I locked them and got their different things but that's because i pre-ordered the most expensive edition which was available for everyone to purchase yeah skywalker was not available at launch he was added in shortly after which is how they got away with that like the special edition of the game didn't even give him to you oh well i i bought the most expensive edition i could digital or physically i think i it was either battlefront one or battlefront two i bought the game digitally i think i bought yeah, digitally, I bought Battlefront 2, which gave me that option. So I unlocked everything and one because with it, I got uh, one of the base weapons with all of its attach. It, it, let's, let's use the word attachments unlocked. All the base weapons had their attachments unlocked for me because I bought the most expensive edition. I saved money. I bought it. I pre-ordered it. So I had it pre-ordered before its release which is when I started going back to play, I unlocked all the characters or I had all the characters unlocked that were available at the time. And after a while, yeah, they're like, here, we're going to just take this out and make it free for everyone. Uh, one of the things that they did change as well, if for those of you that are, again, unaware of this, uh, are playing the game now or starting the game now fresh from scratch, one of the biggest things that they had, which were, which again was the the weapon uh, grinding for, which was like 400, 500,000 kills with a specific weapon type. Later on, they're like, no one's doing this. No one's even getting there. We need to drop this down a lot. So they did. They actually dropped a lot of them down from like 400,000 kills to like 300 like it, it went from it went from 400,000 kills 400k kills to actually just 300 kills player kills and that really and changed the game those that don't know we're talking about the ea remakes of battlefront we're not talking about the original ones that yes. didn't have online capability we're on the ps2 and xbox or you know original we're talking about the newer ones 
Yes, ones. we're talking. We're talking about the new release. It's not the not the old ones. Yes, yeah, n- not the original ones. They're about to get a re-release on of, the Switch. On the Switch. Yeah, but which uh, we're talking, I'm really excited for. But I might just buy a Switch just just for that game alone. You don't have a Switch yet. I don't have a Switch yet. I don't even have. I don't even have a Series X right now. Yeah, but you have a Series S at least. You do have a Series. Oh no, that's right. You've got a One X. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. The yeah. One X is native 4K, so which yeah. really got me that the Series S wasn't. So that was an odd marketing choice, but yeah, anyway. the, the, that'll be some purchases down the line for me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like it, it really kind of ruined the game a lot of different, a lot of different ways. Like they, they're like, okay, well, no one's making this. No one's even coming close. Less than one percent, less than a less than a quarter of a percent of player base has gotten like four hundred thousand kills. What a shock! Because those quarter percenters are the ones that are really really good at the game, and the ones that aren't are just getting killed repeatedly. Because, like, you can't. It, it was it was it was a whole mess, and they just changed a lot of stuff. So I think once the loot boxes went away, they're like, okay, no one's getting these kills. Let's drop them down. So they and then a lot of games stopped lo- locking content behind loot boxes, which again, I understand why they did it money, money, money. Yeah, but it's hella dumb at the same time. Yeah, it destroys the player base, it destroys the player's trust in the developers, it destroys the player's trust in any developer when you start doing that because it's like, oh, will this game have this? Will this game have that? Yada, yada, yada. And it's like, oh well, the game is good. I don't want to buy it. I because it has these loot boxes. Yeah, like locking DLC that adds content to a game being paid is one thing. Expansions. Which I, like exp- yeah, expansions that add story or you know, add maps or you know. But Locking already included content behind a paywall, that's just, you know, money monitoring. Yeah. And that that needs to stop. Which, going to Call of Duty, they had a good idea that I don't know if they do anymore because I don't play Call of Duty. But back in, like, Modern Warfare 1 in two days, when new map packs came out, they had special playlists that required the use of those map packs. They and they had other playlists that you could play that didn't require you to have bought the DLC. If everybody in the lobby had if everybody in the lobby had the DLC, the maps would be in the rotation. But if not everybody had them, the, they wouldn't put that content in the rotation. So you could still play online if you didn't buy the DLC. So as someone who's played Call of Duty religiously, okay. Yeah, I I don't know if the newer ones do that. They don't do that uh, because with every season that releases since, let's call, uh, because I know, I think Advanced Warfare was the last one that they tried to do that with. But because Advanced Warfare was just so, or no, not Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare. I'm sorry. Uh, Infinite, they were both bad. Advanced Warfare wasn't as bad. Yes, it was not great. Some of the maps were still broken upon release, and people found glitches and everything. But uh, Infinite Warfare was just the, the the dumbest. I, I'm sorry, the dumbest of dumb ideas as far as the multiplayer went. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna put you in the sky. In the space, it's like, oh, okay, there'll be gravity, right? No, you're floating. And it's just like, you can't you can't come to a, like, if you were to play an on-the-boots ground type of thing, even with Advanced Warfare's verticality ability with the jump boosters, it still was boots on the ground. And Infinite Warfare, if you want to get technical, it was because you were on a map that you couldn't leave, but... 
you couldn't come to a complete stop around the corner. You couldn't do certain things. Like it just was broken. It, in, it instilled people to run and gun or just sit in a corner and do nothing. And it was hard to turn. Like it was, a, it was a whole deal. And it just ruined the game to the point where like, okay, we're going to stop doing this. But as far as map packs went, I want to say, I want to say advanced warfare was probably the last one that had map packs. Now, not, based on uh, choices on whether or not people had them. I think that ultimately stopped after, I want to say Modern Warfare 2 OG, like not, not, the, not the current one, but the original Modern Warfare 2 on the 360. I think that is where they kind of stopped doing that because I don't remember seeing it in Modern Warfare 3. I do remember the map pack still being there. But uh, I know that there was also, and I, I, if I'm remembering this right, because I don't remember it, uh, it entirely, but I think there were like specific game modes as well. Now, I don't know if that's what you meant. I know there were specific game modes that had a group of maps that were specific to a map pack. Yeah, like like that. And then just other, you know, if they said, okay, we're going to add a new Team Deathmatch-oriented map, you know, they would there would be a playlist set aside for the people that didn't buy, that, you know, hadn't bought the map pack. And even if you had bought the map pack, you could still play that other playlist. Yeah. It's just, you know, they didn't f force you. To I think, buy the map packs just so you could play online. You could still play online. You just, you know, you were a little limited in what you could do, but you could still play. I know. Okay. I know they did. I know that. Uh, okay. So Call of Duty Ghosts, the, the Aztec map where the first person to get a care package became the Predator. I know, I know that was released as a singular map, well, a singular kind of like game mode, I think, or a gr the, the group there of maps that came with that Aztec map uh, for a while had that, and I think people were playing that map pack separately just because of the option to get the Predator from the first care package, because it was... It literally was the first first care package dropped on the map. You became the predator. Like it was always guaranteed, no matter what. Whoever got the first care package, predator. It was just that's just the way it was. Um, I think there was. Well, I, I personally didn't play Ghost, so this is all you talking about this. Also on uh, uh, not Leatherface. Um. Michael Myers. So everyone's everyone's favorite game was uh, well, some of the, the the custom kind of let's call let's call it player based game modes that I have seen before played in custom matches was Michael Myers, and and I, and I remember hearing about them all the time. So Call of Duty Ghost kind of stepped up with that, and they put it into a map pack. I think it was about the same the same group of map packs that was with uh, the Aztecs and the Predator. I believe where they had a that group of maps all had a special quote unquote character, or at least those two did of that map pack that were able to be gotten with uh, a care package. Now, I don't. I do believe that also with the uh, the Michael Myers map. It was a, I do believe that was also the first player to get a care package. Got it. And it never showed up again. It was the same thing for the predator. The first player to get the, to become the predator was the only predator. But the other thing with the predator was they actually followed what predator lore kind of does. So once the predator, once the player who was playing the predator finally died, because they had invisibility, they had their, their claws, and they had the laser cannon that locked onto players. Once the Predator physically died, which actually, the Predator wasn't as overpowered as, say, a Juggernaut is right now, but they could still take a few hits. 
um, once the predator died, he flipped up on his arm. And I think early on, I don't remember. I don't Did he know. nuke the... Yeah, he nuked the map, but the map, the game didn't the end. Map. Everyone just died. Okay. Like it instead of instead of ending the game, it basically said, "Oh, hey, yeah, no, everyone's just getting wiped, and this player is getting all the kills because he was the predator. He nuked the map. He gets the kills for everybody, all, especially if it, especially if it was on the enemy team. So the nuke killed everyone. Your team just died, and the enemy team gave all of their kills to that person that was the predator. So at least I think that's how that worked." I don't remember. It's been so long since I played Call of Duty Ghosts, but again, Predator, after that person died, Predator never showed up as a care package again for the rest of the match. Michael Myers was the same way. I think the other ones that also had that, because I don't remember if there was more. I just remember the two because they were the two most played of that. And Michael Myers, again, was a melee base. He didn't have, like, a ranged weapon. So, yeah. What they did with him was they made him ultra fast and ultra beefy. Like, ridiculous. Like, almost juggernaut based. Okay. But they, they made him really, really fast. And it was just it was just one of those things that just made the game, made that game specifically better. But it was a good microtransaction. So they kind of made their money back for that one. Yeah. But ultimately, you know, it's it's the dumbest, it's the dumbest thing for microtransactions because okay, here's the here's the other part with 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 that with the we were talking about the the countries and how they were banning games that had loot boxes. I didn't yeah. know this. And one of the biggest things that I didn't even know this was because uh, due to the gambling like mechanics of the loot boxes, some governments and citizens. So even citizens stepped up to the game, stepped up and filed charges and lawsuits against their use. And it was, there was a legal battle between the gambling authority and electronic arts EA in Netherlands uh, at, in during 2020. Uh, and this was the Netherlands game gambling authority. And I, I didn't know this. So the court ruled that the Netherlands gaming authority will be allowed to fine EA 500,000 pounds or not pounds euros every week up to a maximum of 10 million euros until it stops selling loot boxes in FIFA ultimate team. Hmm. After the feature was deemed in violation of gambling rules. Another lawsuit was brought up against EA in the U.S. District of Northern California for a feature which artificially adjusts the difficulty to encourage players to purchase loot boxes in advance. Well, that's a big sus move, EA. EA, you're really starting to piss people off. Yeah. There was also another case brought a class action suit brought up against EA. Man, we are we're on a roll here with EA. What 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 is going on over there? Like EA and Apple, you know? No, this was all <laughs> EA. Like these were these were all three EA. Uh yeah. so this is a class action suit brought up against EA in Canada in October of 2020, where the plaintiffs argued well, that Apple because of the mobile thing that they Oh did, well, yeah, because they we're blaming them for microtransactions in general. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, back back to EA's lawsuits against them yeah where plaintiffs argued that randomized loot boxes should be considered illegal gambling in canada due to the multiple ongoing cases and questions of the legality of loot boxes regulation may soon widely be adopted to control the aggressive monetization scheme behind loot boxes to be honest i'd be honestly okay with that again to an extent, to an extent. To an extent yeah i would be okay with it if loot boxes are only considered cosmetic only and they do show you like what are in the chances of getting said loot or setting getting said cosmetic in the box you can theoretically and this would actually have to be implemented in the game code that if you did the math, I don't know what the math would be, but if you did the math and say it's a 5% chance to get a legendary cosmetic you would have to buy 
X number of loot boxes to get a chance at a legendary. So the game I would the- be okay with forcing game companies to tell you that calculated amount of how much you would have to spend on average to get the best item in the box. That would be another thing. Like what I'm going with is that it would force the game companies to be like, okay, so I'm going to buy 25 loot boxes and that's, that's an, that's an available number. Uh, you can buy them singly in fives or in 25, 25. You are guaranteed, guaranteed a chance, not a chance guaranteed to get one legendary item in two of those boxes. Like you have to specifically say that, but with that also the backside is that with if you buy them in ones and fives over let's say a three month period once you buy 25 of them that 25th one will give you a guaranteed legendary like if it keeps track for you i do know of a couple mobile games that do that i do too like i've seen yeah. a few of them like there's there's a couple of them and they're mostly like free it's to play and you can earn them 99th box but and i don't spend anything but free credits on those boxes true but, but it keeps they track do for you track and say you can either buy them all at once or if you buy them over time it still counts yeah there's a little ticker on that loot box that counts up every time you redeem one yeah whether you paid for it or whether you earned it yeah that would be the one thing to do that i I think would uh, would both make people or or allow people to buy or spend their hard-earned money on these games sure if you just sell certain cosmetics by themselves um ea ea ubisoft call of duty like every gaming company right now that does cosmetic based stuff they sell them individually so that you're like okay i want this piece this piece and this piece because this piece these these groups of pieces look good together they're not do not all go together in the same bundle but i can mix and match them so you don't have to buy the whole set you can buy them individually which I think is a good point because I've seen that with again with Division Two there is a loot box again I say loot box system but it is all cosmetic based it hardly for apparels it hardly does anything to the game it just makes your character look cool you can get legendary epic rare and common items by just playing the game I have gotten several myself just by playing the game, not even doing anything. I'm not even a high level and I got a couple of them already, but they also have available for you to do is that, and this was, and again, I didn't know this until recently because I went back into it and started playing it again, is that with every duplicate you get of the same item you already own, it gives you fabric credits now they actually i believe they call them fabric credits which means that instead of spending money to get premium currency you can get duplicates get fabric credits and still buy the items so you can still buy the apparel that's available it's only a select few of the apparel that you can use the fabrics on per week month whatever it is because they reset but yeah. it gives you a set number it's like here you can buy these with the fabric items oh i don't want any of these i'll just save my fabrics the week goes by or whatever the time limit is up it resets it brings in three to five more i'm like oh okay here's the one i want i have enough i'll buy it that is a good system it doesn't require you to get a lucky yeah, it's, loot it's box. not the best system but no, that is that is a better system than i have but seen it is better yeah it is better i mean it comes up with the same thing as warframe you can buy in-game premium credits you can grind for them and make other players buy them because they don't want to grind because they're hard to find hard to grind for the odds of getting them yada 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 because of that and they actually with, with Warframe, they also changed a bunch of stuff recently. So that's a whole different that's a whole different thing. But with Division Two, you could still buy 
all the items, all the apparel that is that again is available with premium credits, but they also give you a chance to do that with fabrics. And I have gotten legendary items from their loot boxes that apparel caches, which are the basic thing that you can get just by playing the game and doing specific things. Like, I don't know what specific things there are, but I think there is like uh, some of the dailies and weeklies give them as well as they give in-game loot that is hard to find, like exotic and named stuff. But with that apparel, to make yourself look character look good, they don't make you keep the, the duplicates. So like here, here you go. You don't have to spend any money. Cause that is a better system than anything I've seen. Like just anything because, yeah. uh, because of, because of how, it, how nice it is. Oh, you've got duplicates. Oh, okay. Well, we're just going to put that in your inventory. Why? I don't want it. I have a duplicate of it already. I already well, have it. Yeah. It's a duplicate. I'm not allowed to equip it twice. Yeah. And like, oh, well then we're just going to, it's just going to, it's just going to do nothing. So we're going to, we're going to make you give you a duplicate and give you nothing in return. Huh? I mean, I keep on, on specific games like that. Warframe is a good example. I keep duplicates of certain items because, hey, I've built one. And you can I'm, sell them. I'm going to I'm going to hold on to these duplicates that I have because I can both use them for it, which, again, is another thing. Warframe has a. Uh, a character that comes around. So those of you that play Destiny, you all remember Oh my god, what was his name? Zer? Zer, yes, on Destiny. Zer. Destiny, on, yes. On Warframe, his name is Barrow Ketir. Barrow Ketir. Now, Barrow yes. Ketir comes once a once a week. Right? Every, every other week. Every he comes other week. every other week. Sorry. I knew he came. I knew he came. Uh, I know he comes on Friday and he stays for three days. Mm -hmm. He picks a random relay, which is essentially a gathering point for players. And yep. it yep sits it's like there a social hub. and sits there and it gives you the option to buy some really really nice stuff and it's and it's really really good stuff too so you are some prime that you can only get from him very true and for those of you that are unaware primed mods are essentially the best version or one of the best versions of the mods there there are other mods that are not primed but they're also some of the best as well in the lore, primed mods are like the original version of the mod from long ago. Which makes them the best. And the, mods, and the mods that you get normally are deteriorated mods over time. Yeah. Because they they actually did used to give you mods that literally said damaged. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. Oh, they don't. Do, they took the they took the cracked mods out. They took the cracked, damaged mods. They took cracked and damaged mods out because. People were getting too many of them, and I think ultimately they just decided to do it. Uh, but yeah, with Barrow Ketir, like those items you can get that you can sell for platinum, you can turn in for ducats, which are only available to use for Barrow Ketir. And each item, uh, depending on what tier it was that you needed to get to at the time, which a lot of the prime stuff, which is the stuff that most people were buying and some of the mods were only available on certain game modes on certain maps. Now, with that, uh, you had a chance of getting them at certain rounds. Again, it, they, they did specify which rounds you had a chance of getting them on, but they did change their system again for relics, which... Uh, Every relic that is a that that every time a new prime comes out, they change up the relics. So like here, these relics are no longer available. These ones are in. These ones have this, this, and this. If you these have ones... relics that got phased out, yeah. you can still use them. You just can't get any more of them. Yeah. And yeah, the way the relics worked was they had their own drop list, and, and you yeah. picked which relic you wanted to use for its drop list, and you could actually put. Um, this earnable right. energy currency into the relics to upgrade them and make the lowers have a less chance and the higher's to have a higher chance. Yeah. It kind of all evened out to an extent. Yeah. yeah. So instead of instead yeah. of a one in ten chance I you really, came one in four. I really do love the way 
Warframe has done its monetization. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it has been aggressive because, you know, every time they release a new Prime Warframe, they're like, buy, you know, there's a an $80 bundle for this Prime Warframe that pops up that gives you a bunch of platinum and the the new frame and a special skin for it and everything. And it's like an $80 bundle and it, they release a new frame like every three months. Uh, yeah, it's, so yeah. It, it's a lot, but when you go and look at that, you do not need that big thing to get the frame. You can go and farm the relics to get that prime frame and build it yourself. Or you can buy the platinum to buy the pieces from players that have farmed it. Yeah. Or you can spend 80 bucks to get it. Or you can just spend 1200 platinum on the in-game shop to just buy a copy of the frame. There are multiple ways to go about doing it. Not and you know, not all of them require money. Matter of fact, there's more that don't require money than require money. It's true. They take a little more time, but everything in Warframe is earnable because they have that player ran shop where you can trade platinum for items. Yep. With players. I mean, it, it, here's the here's the other thing that have you ever have you ever bought a, a primed Warframe bundle? I bought one. You bought one. I bought I, one. I bought the Nyx Prime bundle when it came out. Was but I didn't get the eighty dollar one. I got the cheaper one that just came with the frame and the okay. platinum. Yeah. I don't think they do the frame because and the cheaper that was version. Before, yeah. They don't do that anymore. That was before they overhauled Nyx, where Nyx was still a walking tactical nuke with my asthma. <laughs> <laughs> You remember that. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, you remember Mesa when Mesa first came out. Mesa's still broken. Mesa, they tunnel visioned her um, but you peacemaker can, yes. mode, and you have to aim it now and it doesn't go through walls. You used to just be able to sit on the point, pop peacemaker, and as long as you had a um, a mag using pull, to pull resources, you could just sit there and stay in Peacemaker and wreck everything within a 100-meter radius. Now it's energy-based. Now, now it's energy-based, and you, you they tunnel-visioned it. To where the, he, he, it, your aim at reticle gets smaller and smaller as it goes. Yeah, but, and it gets the, harder to aim. but But, but, but as it gets harder to aim, it does more damage and fires faster. Yeah. It is so cool. And it's, it is, she is still broken. For those of you that oh, don't yeah. have she's one, still she's still nasty. Oh yeah, like I, I, I broke this. It's really difficult to get for that boss fight because that boss fight can turn your frame into an enemy for a, for like fifteen seconds. Only, <laughs> only if there's multiple players. Yeah, mutilist. No, well, yeah, yeah. Mutilist if, if, out, if, it, it just damages you. Yeah, but mutilist Alad V's collar is nasty if you get hit with it in multiplayer yeah. I once brought Mesa to that boss fight and I got <laughs> collared my entire team went down in like 0.3 seconds yeah it, because it up Peacemaker before they fi before they patched it and, P and Peacemaker just wrecked everybody and they were like dude do not bring Mesa back to this boss fight please <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh sorry said, okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I bought I bought Mesa Prime I bought Alice Prime. I bought I bought a couple of the primes because because one yeah. of the things with with buying the prime. So for those of you that uh, this is this is a microtransaction issue is that once you buy the prime from them for eighty dollars, it gives you the weapon, the prime Warframe, uh, unique skin that well the, the prime Warframe is a unique skin for it, but it gives you a unique I think a unique head. Or something yeah yeah a unique helmet and yeah. it also gives you that 2650 platinum which is learned. over which is over 80 bucks worth of platinum yes and that's where that's where it comes in because technically you if you're gonna buy platinum you are getting a deal because you're getting the warframe and the warframe and the weapons that come with that warframe have uh, before this they before it was really really hard to get 
there are Arokan reactors and uh, Arokan weapon. I don't remember what the weapon one was. Catalyst. Arokan a reactor and Arokan catalyst. It came installed on the Warframe and the weapons, which doubled your ability to put mods on weapons and the Warframe itself. They came yeah. pre-installed, which meant that you didn't have to spend the time to farm for that or buy it. Uh, but now Arokan reactors and Arokan catalysts are really, really easy to get. Uh, so it's not yeah. such a huge issue anymore. But you just have to spend hours on Saturn. <laughs> yeah. Farming, it, uh, it, Argus rug. Yeah. To just get the, um, the Orkin cells to make them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's it has massively changed. It's made it a lot easier to do a lot of different things. But that's what the eighty dollars gives you. It gives you the severely reduced platinum. It gives you the new Warframe that you get to try out right away and max it out, as well as an affinity booster and a credit booster, I believe, as well. Which so, I think lasts for three days when once you activate them. No, once you buy it, oh. it, it it's it's immediate. It, it, oh, and then auto activate. Yeah, it auto activate. But they activates. still last for three days. Yeah, they still they still last for three days. So within depending on what you're doing, you can still level that thing up within like three missions. Oh yeah, and so you can just then try you it can out. Do prestige. Yeah. To, you know, polarize, yeah. repolarization, so you can polarize the mod slots. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's not, I mean, it, you got a whole bunch of good stuff for that eighty dollars. I mean. It's a free to play game, so they got to make their money somehow. Remember, you got the, I mean, even just playing it, they have done a lot with the limited, well, with with how limited it really is in how free, it's free to play. So they're like, okay, the, the platinum, we're going to do this every three months, we're going to have something new. That's where they recoup, that's where they make the most money because a lot of people buy that primed Warframe. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I, I'm going to grind for it anyways, but I'm just going to buy it so I can use it now, be the first to use it, build builds for it, yada, yada, yada. And then they go and grind for it, and then the players themselves make their money back by selling it for platinum when it, when it becomes not available yeah, anymore. Because they, yeah. they, they have so many duplicates of, of the build, they're like, oh, I'm going to sell the entire set. Because people that just have the parts or just have an individual part and they want to buy it, most people that go to these these hubs to buy it, they buy them by the sets. They don't buy them by the piecemeal because if you buy it for a set, you could just build it and go. You don't have to keep coming back to search for the parts. So, yeah, as long as you got the necessary resources to get yes. it. So that, that's the that's yeah. the biggest thing. That's the biggest draw I think a Warframe has over any other free to play, really because it has all of that it has it has the ability to buy the warframe buy platinum to buy it from the players players can then go and grind for it themselves get multiple versions of it multiple sets of it turn around and sell it to other players and it's an all in-game thing there's a whole like well csgo has the kind of the same thing with the the guns and the weapons they actually can you can actually go on specific websites and they don't stop you from doing this they used to they used to frown upon it but after realizing what was actually happening they're like oh okay never mind they backed off with that they started having these websites that act that actively watched what had happened so like oh okay so this this thing is worth this much you can sell it for this much there there's a limit like people can spend this much on it. Yeah, Warframe has some stuff like that too, where there are websites where people post. report, or where people post how much they're selling items for and everything, and it keeps track of like averages yeah. of highs and lows, what the thing is worth, whether the price has been going up or going down. It it keeps track mm. of the in-game economy. And I mean that's that's the thing for that in both CSGO. I mean they they, they kind of stepped up to a plate and filled a void where to be honest, there are people that open crates in CSGO just to get that stuff so they can recoup their money. Cause I've seen people do it and then they go look up what the price is on the weapon or the item, and they're blown away because they'll because they don't because you don't know. 
because yeah. you don't know how much something is worth. I mean, if you get something that's factory new and CSGO, that is a really, really hard pull. But even some of the ones that are factory new aren't worth as much as, say, the one that's like slightly used, essentially. Yeah, I don't play CSGO, so, you know, I don't have a PC, so. I, I, but, I do. I mean, like, I, I do play it, but I don't play it for spending money like that because yeah i cannot afford that kind of style if i could afford spending three to four hundred dollars even five hundred dollars to get keys and cases and then just continuously open them i would because it's five hundred dollars i mean the odds that i would get something that is worth more than five hundred dollars increases drastically because i'm spending five hundred dollars yeah. But if I can't spend five hundred dollars, the odds of me getting anything remotely good drastically reduce. Because mm-hmm. I did it once as a microtransaction, and this is still microtransaction based. Is uh, Star Trek Online? For those of you that don't know, that is also a free to play game. Uh, the Xbox version is behind the PC version, as far as versions go. And a lot of stuff that's on PC gets ported over to Xbox and. So one year during Black Friday, I decided, oh, hey, I'm going to spend, what was it, like 100 bucks? Something uh, like that. It was, yeah, I think it was, we were playing it together at that point. Yeah, I, I, I went and spent I went and spent 100 bucks uh, Black Friday, and I Back bought it <laughs> as I bought I bought as many uh, in-game premium currency as I could. I bought as many keys to open cases and not once in the entire case setup did I ever get uh, like the ability to they have tiers for the ships there are universal ships that you can get that are available during crates only during certain crates but there is a universal crate that has uh, the last let's call it the last 30 I don't know how many ships that are in the, the setup but like the last 30 ships that were available in those crates that are specific and you get to choose between them i always do the universal one because i can get universal stuff and i can pick and choose what i want so i opened up as many as i could i never once got one of those boxes for to pick the ship not once and i i think i bought like 50 50 keys at the time which you would think that 50 keys you would at least get it once like one time yeah but ultimately what i think with that system and again this is the microtransaction system is that it's not based on your player and that's where i think that should be enforced is i think it was based on server so every time in someone in that that uh, that region or whatever or the server that your character was playing on, not even the instance, just the server. Every time someone would open one, it would increase the chance for the next person and the next person and the next person. Because you can't just open 50 right away. You have to do them individually. So and then there I are, don't remember that. No. There, there, yeah. there, are, there are thousands of pe- there are thousands and thousands of people doing this. Well, at the time there was, it's kind of died off yeah. now as a game. Um, people aren't playing it as much, but it was kind of that that whole thing because I would I opened fifty of them, I didn't get it once, but I kept seeing in 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 global chat, well, let's call it global chat. Every time in the chat, I would see oh, it would pop up on screen. This person got an epic token, token or whatever, which essentially says is basically a tier six ship, free ship. And it's like, what the hell? I opened fifty of these, I didn't get one. So yeah. if it if it's set up in a system so that it it's like oh okay this player open up fifty of them we'll give them two or whatever like it, if it, even if it's not known to the player but every player that opens one it procs for them and they don't know that would say like oh okay I'll buy twenty five of these. And somewhere in those 25, it'll be like, oh, okay, so you bought 25 keys. Okay, you open 25 crates. When you open the 25 crates, somewhere in there, you will get one. Yeah. 
and as it procs up, so you need 25 keys to get one. In that 25 key area, even if you buy them individually, say you buy one key every day for 25 days and you open it, somewhere in that 25 key increases the chance of you getting like uh, the high tier items. Yeah, I, I've seen I've seen micros work that way, where as you buy it, it gives a small buff to every time. So yeah. Then you buy again and you get a small buff, but when you get one of those high tier items, that buff resets. Yes, that I'm absolutely okay with because the first time you buy a crate, it still resets. If it happens the twentieth time you buy a crate, it still resets. And like, I kind of like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it it kind of companies shy away from that because it prevents them from saying, hey, buy this big bundle for the guaranteed. Which, well, you know, is more money mongering. Yeah, but again, even if they said here, here's a guarantee for it for those people that stay because there was a specific ship that I wanted that I never got a chance to get. That's why I was buying them. Oh, there was a bunch I wanted that I never got. Okay. <laughs> and I never bought crates for that game. They actually, okay. Okay. Kind, of, kind of a thing to kind of go back into this. So you remember those events that you did to earn specific items? Oh, yeah. Well, they added a system in where certain events, like they'll tell you which events had this. You build up. And once you complete the event and get the item, you earn a specific portion to either get a free tier six ship or a bunch of other stuff. So we actually added that in recently, like in the last year or so. Okay. So I just got a choice of tier six ship because I did four events, completed them, and now I'm able to get a one rant, one choice of tier six ship. And it's there's still ones from um the crates as well. Those are those are the ones that are available because I think I can get um like the, the universe class enterprise, which was only available to the, the crate. Yeah. And it doesn't just it doesn't just give you from those ones, it gives you from ones that we have never seen before. Or we missed out on. So like that's the whole thing, like with microtransactions. I mean, like that's a good thing about that. You can earn one specific weapon or you can do it through that. I mean, that kind of stuff I'm okay with because I can earn it still. But it will take me a while because those events are usually like 14, 28 days. Uh, they actually give you a lot of time to complete the event. Yeah. It, it, going on with the events, I don't like the idea of time-limited paid battle passes. Okay. If an event is going to be time limited, it needs to be free. In my opinion, if you going to if you pay for something, it needs to be yours forever. You like the way Halo does their battle passes. I know everybody's going to go, "Oh, you Halo Infinite," but I for one am with the that. The way their battle passes are done is once you buy a season. That season stays there. Until Even you after the it. season ends and the next season comes in. Until you max out all the items from that season, that season is there. It does not go away, ever. Like, I still have the first two seasons of Halo Infinite bought. I haven't completed them because I, I rarely play Halo Infinite multiplayer. But I still have them. They really? are there for me to earn because I purchased them. Yes. I didn't realize that. I have to go back in there now and look because 
Yeah, well, I thought and, that uh, once the season was over with season one, season two took over, and you couldn't earn season one anymore. That's kind of why I stopped playing once yeah, I realized that. Only, the only earnable things that went away were like the Tenrai event for the samurai based armor. You know, if you didn't do that when it was up, you couldn't get it. You can't get it I now. Did. I think I got it. But yeah. But they had limited time events that, you know, you had to have the game and had to be playing the game then to com- to go. But those are the only items that became unobtainable. If you completely missed a season, you can still go back and buy that season. Like you could pick up Halo Infinite today, brand new, log into the multiplayer, and season one is there for purchase. Huh. Well, I, that is the way Halo does their microtransactions. And yeah, they they have that stupid store where they tried to charge 10 bucks for solid white armor. That was stupid. But they admitted, okay, we probably shouldn't have done that. That that was a little too zealous with the shop. So they adjusted prices. It's still a little much, but it's better. They they actually did listen to their fan base and player base and make adjustments to the game. I don't think they took the adjustments far enough, but they have been listening. And I think overall with microtransactions, it's listening to your player base, finding out what they are and are not okay with. Yeah. Cause based okay, so there's another good point with that. Now that I just I you you said something with that with how season one and season two are still available for purchase. I didn't know yeah. that because I haven't been in there in a while. Again, I haven't been in there since basically release. I do apologize. I love Halo. I love I Halo. I've been in there for a while. It may not be that way now, but it I'm pretty not- sure it is. But I'm pretty sure it is because that was the way, you know, Halo uh, Master Chief Collection was done. Okay. You can still go back and gain access to all of their seasons. I didn't know that. But uh, back, back to back to this. So for Division 2, and again, I just recently started getting back into playing it after like for how long it's been since its release. I played it to, again, I played to basic completion. There was nothing else to do. I stopped playing, didn't care about it, kind of forgot about it, played other games. Things just kept coming up one after another. I always meant to go back. So I went back recently and I started playing again. I forgot how much fun it was. And how chaotic it can get. And I was going through once I hit max level. They showed that, hey, the battle pass, you can buy the battle pass because I hit max level and got a bunch of other stuff done that was available now that wasn't available then, which gave me access to the battle pass. They're like, oh, yeah. So these characters that you need to like find and go hunt for and kill. Yeah, you can still get this one. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, and then it shows there's like, oh, yeah, you can go back. Like, they specifically say, oh, yeah, you can go back. It shows up on the screen in a menu that says to bypass this or skip this or exit. And it, those little tutorial things, it's like, oh, yes, you can also go back and do the other ones as well, get their items. It's like, so I can go all the way back to the beginning. They still have that. So you can go back. I don't know how far you can go back, but I think you can go back like at least six or seven seasons. I looked back that far about as far back as I went. But yeah, like I have an issue with temporary and it, access. And it doesn't. And here's the thing. I mean, with the battle pass. Well, again, quote unquote battle pass. It's only with it. Uh, it's it's not really a bad. I don't consider it truly a battle pass. Um, I want to say I don't want I don't want to say that. I do want to say that at the same time. Um, I don't remember if there are time limited events where you need to do specific things to gain specific items. But um, and once that event is over, you can't get any more. But uh, there's an in-game battle pass that kind of works with that. I didn't really check it out too closely. I just remember that I could go back and hunt the previous manhunt targets and get that stuff. I think the battle passes are basically the battle passes. So once the battle passes are over, they're over. But the the manhunts that were with the battle pass, which gave you some unique in-game loot, are still available for everyone else to go back and redo or go back and do if they miss something. 
Yeah, so like I would be okay with like half of that. I'd be okay with the manhunt style, but not the battle pass. I don't like that if you pay for something in a game, and let's say you're a nine to five person, you don't have time. Don't have you don't have the time to put the hours exactly to put into that game to complete all the challenges for the pass and get the pass up to max level and get all the bonuses and everything that you paid for access to. Yeah. You know, they, they get screwed out of that because it's like, oh, you know, give us money and we'll give you the chance to get this item, the availability to earn this item, but only for 36 days or whatever. Yeah, with I, I just I don't like that. So here's what I do, when, and I used to do this with with um, with Fortnite because I, I didn't really play Fortnite a lot. But with their battle pass thing, and with a lot of the battle passes, um, I've been doing recently. So there are battle passes now. They they kind of nix this originally because they're like, oh well, people are getting this, this, and this. So one of the things that could be done with a Fortnite is that you could get to battle pass level 98 and then buy which which they nerfed right away really quickly you get to level 98 without buying the battle pass and then you could buy the battle pass with the 25 level boost which would put you at that 100 to get everything available and then it would also boost you over 100 so they nixed that right away because people were getting the the extra level stuff really easily yeah and they didn't want that they wanted people to either buy the battle pass right away or get to level 100 so what they did was once your character once your once your level got to level 75 that battle pass 25 level option went away like it vanished from your screen you couldn't get it anymore and it kept track of that so what i always did is that once i hit level 74 I would buy that battle pass and the 25 level boost, get to level 99, and all I'd have to do is just one level and I wouldn't have to touch it again. Usually by yeah. the time at the end of the season rolled around, it was at that 74, and all I had to do was a couple more games and I would be at level 100. And it was usually close to the end of the season where that would happen. So it worked out for me. I do that with a lot of, I try to do that with a lot of the other ones as well. Call of Duty is a good point of that right now. I'm not exactly buying the battle pass right away. You can earn all of the weapons that they bring out every season, right? Basically just by playing the game because the, the weapons themselves are free. And if you miss them in the battle pass just by playing the game, you can earn them by doing specific things. Like you could get like getting 25 kills, aiming down. A, like it's very specific. Like it's not just 25 operator kills. It's like 25 kills aiming down the site with uh, this type of weapon. Like you'd have to aim down the site with an assault rifle. But it's not outrageous. It's just semi-annoying. But you also have to do that for like camos and stuff. So it's not a huge loss to the player base if they miss out on a specific weapon. Yeah, but that's that's again playing into the fact of if you have more money to dump into the game, they make it easier for you just yeah. because you're giving them more money. But here's which the th plays into the pay to win. Here, here's here's the other thing with that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of counterpoint with that. You're right that it pays plays into the point of pay to win. But for those that are that those people that are actually playing the game a lot and are buying that weapon. The irony with that is, and I think they're okay with this being in there because I use it, unfortunately, like that. If you kill a operator or a player that has that specific weapon that you don't have yet or don't have unlocked yet, and then you use it, you can level it up even though you don't have it unlocked. So that once you unlock it, it's at that level. So you could, like, you could level up the weapon to max level and not have it unlocked yet. Yeah, but you still have to get into a match with somebody that has that weapon. And most of the time, the people do have the weapon, especially when it's a new season, because then you could just run with it. And usually by the end of the season, you either have it unlocked or you don't. But 
that that's that, that's the one cool thing about that is that even if other people have it, you can use it. Yeah. You know what's irony? We actually have been gotten to that two hour period almost. Sure, we kind of okay. we kind of we kind of separated a lot, but a couple times. yeah, a cu couple of times, a couple of times. I, I was a little worried we wouldn't be able to get two hours out of microtransactions, but I guess I shouldn't have been. <laughs> yeah, it's microtransactions, bruh. Shouldn't shouldn't have been so underestimating microtransactions. People love them and hate them at the same time. What did you expect was going to happen? Not have two hours. Yeah. Room? I mean, that's that's a definite. I mean, it's there's a whole there's a there's a whole there are whole arguments made about it. Like people raging against it, people people being upset because they're going, oh, well, again, like me, you spend fifty dollars, you don't get a single item that's worth a damn, or that's worth something to you, because and then there's people like me that just can't afford the boxes typically. Yeah, and it's hella stupid and hella dumb. Yeah, because I just get screwed out of this extra content because I can't afford it. I just don't. Discriminates against the poor have. people. It does. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, there's 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 a whole thing with with microtransactions and how stupid they are. I understand. I understand why they were made. It's all about money. I respect yeah. that, but if you could make it better for the regular player base, like Joe Blow is working a nine to five because a lot of those Joe, a lot of Joes that like the a lot of the average Joes and Jesses that li that do nine to five jobs, not only do they have a nine to five job, but usually they have other responsibilities as well. They can't just spend a lot of time playing video games. Yeah. Be, even though they want to, even though they have the system, they can't spend a lot of time. So it kind of they kind of lose out on a lot, and that really doesn't. It's not based on a lot of the games. I mean, if you love the game or you like playing the game, like I like playing Call of Duty from time to time. Do I rage against it? Absolutely. But if you spend a lot of time on different games, and different games come out, you spend money on that instead of microtransactions it's it, it, yeah. it kind of it kind of all boils down to money and i hate that if we could get and this is this is gonna probably be the next conversation of, of about how the next the next podcast will probably be about this it'll be a difference of what our what we will be like for future like what 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 could happen and what certain things that would change us as humanity if these things came through. I'm not gonna say anything else more than that because I want that to be a whole discussion. And we're gonna say well, that I have for a next time. Quick summer. topic, real quick. Okay. It's not microtransaction related. We've kind of gone on about that enough now. <laughs> There's only so much you can beat a dead horse with. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do, do you want this part? Do you want, want hold on? Do you want this recorded for the podcast or do you want it just you and me? No, it can be. It can okay. be. All right. Let's hear it. Again, with my non gaming insider knowledge, <laughs> but my heavy research knowledge. Right, heavy research. Okay. You know how everybody's been freaking out over Microsoft lately that, you know, oh, they're stopping production on consoles. They're, you know, releasing Game Pass games on non-Xbox hardware. Yeah. And everybody's been freaking out thinking Microsoft is getting out of the gaming market, at least in a hardware point of view, that yeah. they're going to go the route of Sega. And, you know, even Phil Spencer has chimed in somewhat on this. Mm -hmm. I've found speculations out there that hint towards the fact of Xbox trying to break away from Microsoft 
as a possibility. Is there anything official on that? No. But the speculation is out there. Very little, but it is out there. You know how rocked the gaming world will be? If, if Xbox breaks? Xbox breaks away from Microsoft and loses that multi-billion dollar funding. But here, here's the thing. I thought Xbox it was originally... Theoretically. Yeah, go ahead. I thought Xbox was created by Microsoft to get into the console gaming industry. It was. So how could how could Xbox break away? Explain that one. They could break away by stating that they have made enough of an impact on the gaming industry that they are their own entity now. That they no longer need the the Microsoft name on them to be recognized. I mean... Which I completely agree with. They have made a massive impact. They brought the gaming world online. They brought games to the internet on console. Okay. Here, 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 PC here. doesn't count. They brought console gaming to online multiplayer. Like, they literally did that. That was Microsoft that first did that. That well, first had a unified online system with the launch of Xbox Live on the original Xbox. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not poking a hole. I'm not poking a hole in that. Yeah. I don't, rem I, I don't always equate Microsoft with Xbox. I don't think many exactly. people. I don't think many people. And that do. would be the argument. That would be the argument they could use it's, to it. break away. I don't the only time I ever remember seeing I've only seen Microsoft's name on a couple of games itself. And even with even with it being an Xbox Xbox based game, I don't remember seeing it. I remember seeing Microsoft Studios with certain games. But yeah, with, but with see, now even Microsoft Game Studios, it's Xbox Game Studios now. So they call them Xbox Game Studios. Like Bethesda is an Xbox Game Studio. Activision now is an Xbox Game Studio. But it's all but but those were purchased by Microsoft. Yes. The father figure. Yeah. Because I mean Xbox isn't gonna have the funding by themselves to make a, you know, eighteen billion dollar transaction or however much the Activision Blizzard buyout was. But they have been acting in their own regards. The conversations between Xbox and Nintendo for their you know, partnership that is now coming to fruition, now that the Activision Blizzard deal is done, they can move forward with it. And we're seeing Game Pass exclusive titles like Grounded you know, and Pentiment. And you know, we're seeing stuff like that go to other consoles now because xbox is making their own decisions i mean do, do we really think that microsoft is in charge of letting exclusive titles go to other consoles no microsoft would never let that happen they are one of these mega corporations that's just as money hungry as ea if not more you know mm. i mean how many startup operating systems have they put millions of dollars into shutting down just to keep Windows from having competition? There's I'm, been a lot. There's been a lot. Yeah. There but, were... <laughs> yeah. It, it, everybody, you know, you, you think about it now. Oh, I can't think of any real. I can think of one operating system that offers legitimate pricing competition to to windows and that's mac os linux that's it. as well L linux but linux is primarily free like well i know but i'm just saying like linux is also an operating system that is free. yes but it doesn't give money 
competition, real money competition to Microsoft. To either of them. But then again, that's sure, not yeah. like, it, Linux, Linux, Linux is like, so there's what I love about some with, with those, with that right there is that between the three of them, they hold over a bunch of stuff because Linux is, I don't know if they're free, but um, with Linux is that some, uh, let's, let's call it, let's call it games or some programs and software that are used on Linux are required. So I guess maybe some base code from Linux is required. So they get paid for that in the software. So the software that is being used on Linux, uh, requires money you pay for that software to use on linux and linux is getting paid from that like, yeah I, I would almost think that that's how that would work because there's no way linux os can operate that the company running it could operate as an operating system without making some money somewhere sure yeah would it be probably not as much as say microsoft's uh windows or mac os from apple no to but my knowledge Linux is kind of like kind of like crowdfunding, but crowd coded. Like they take these coders and everything that make programs and do modifications to Linux, and they kind of say, "Okay, well, this is working better than it was, so we're going to take this new code and adapt it. We're going to take this new thing and adapt it, and." That's, as far as I know, that's how most of the coding on Linux gets done. I don't know. I've never, I've never really looked into Linux. I, I, I there, there's a, for, 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 okay. I'm, I, this would, this would probably qualify me as a Microsoft master race. And, <laughs> and I, I say that, I say, I know saying that is probably going to like raise some eyebrows, but I'm just stating this as a fact. I prefer Windows over Mac OS. Here's the thing why I hate Apple products just in general. It's not because I dislike their technology. It's because I dislike the way they run their business. That's why I stay away from Sony and Apple as well. I, try I, to I dislike business practices that. That's why I stay, common these mega companies. That's why I stay away from Sony myself. I because there were a lot of games that I wanted to play that were only on PlayStation. I wanted to play Horizon Zero Dawn. Well, the, I don't have a problem with them having exclusive studios. Oh I mean, no, that's that's, that's yeah. part of that's part of that. But it's it. My problem with the exclusivity thing is that <sighs> Sony has been caught now giving game companies money. To make to it. Keep, just to keep their games off of Game Pass. <sighs> like, that is just corporate sabotage. Yeah, that's actually like, corporate that espionage because you're paying someone that is to... That's not, like, going, going and giving a... Like, what, what Sony has been doing with Square Enix over many years is trying to buy them. Yeah, Sony but... has given an, an offer on Square Enix numerous countless freaking times numerous times over the past 20 years because they want that studio as an as an exclusive yeah, well, it's great. That, this is making enough money from both sides that it's like nah that is one thing to try to buy the company that is one thing yes because the company just inside, no. secretly giving the company money to not fully support another console that is just sketchy I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like the way that Sony has been doing their business. But do they make great products? Yes. Like I have, I have, uh, I have, I'm not saying I won't use Sony products. Well, I mean, Sony Electronics, no doubt. Are yeah, no, I'll use Sony products, products. But how they run PlayStation has, and I this mean, is even, actually, has, even Microsoft uses Sony products every time they put a Blu-ray player. Yeah. In a PC or in the console, you know, the Xbox Series X, that's a Blu ray player. Yeah. Sony gets royalties off that. But with that, is that Sony has been messing up big time on their own console. And 
people have been noticing the differences because like I don't know I don't know when I first started figuring it out but a, a lot of the games that are available on both systems people on Sony are paying more than the people on Xbox and PC and yeah. they were always and they were paying a lot more like it wasn't it wasn't just like like a couple of bucks this was like 10 15 bucks difference between yeah. the two titles on Xbox Game Store Steam and PlayStation. And it was ridiculous. And the player base, if I remember right, all wanted to know where the money was going. And so I was like, oh, well, we're, we're pocketing that because they're using it on our system. We have a right to charge what we want. We just give them what they set the prices to. Xbox and Steam are not that way. Because Xbox, sure, does Xbox need to make some money by letting them use their system? Yes, but it's not a gross amount. It, 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 what gets me on Xbox is that they've released statements stating that like the number of Game Pass subscribers on Xbox is staggeringly low. Like it's like 30, 33, 35 somewhere around there of Xbox owners subscribe to Game Pass compared to PlayStation. Well, no, just period. Game Pass is a crazy absolutely crazy business plan yeah on you, xbox's part because you think about it you get all the first party titles that <sighs> like they're all coming to game pass all of the first party titles indie games big titles doesn't matter starfield day one Blue you know up. they've said elder scroll six day one will be on game pass yep you know, they're securing titles like Resident Evil 3 just got added. You know, they're at the new indie game Power World in its beta is available on Game is Pass. Is available on Game Pass. Like, they are just, you know, they're supporting all of this. Getting these big titles, getting the small titles onto Game Pass. And you can argue, well, if it's on Game Pass, then the people are paying Microsoft to pay it to play it. Yeah, but Microsoft is gives also these studios money. They very, give these studios funding for having the games on Game Pass because it brings not only brings more people to Microsoft. It allows – it. it's like a double-edged sword there. Yes, Microsoft gets more traffic, but so does these smaller titles because somebody might say, you know, oh, I'm going to – you know, I I really want to play, you know, Halo and Flight Simulator and Starfield, so I'm going to get Game Pass. And then they discover these little titles as well that are there for no extra charge. Yep. And these little game companies that, you know, I've – I've discovered games on Game Pass that I never would have even looked at. But because they hit Game Pass, I said, okay, I'll download it and try it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm the same way with that. Because yeah. I think uh let me check. Let me check. Cause I will check I'll check my I'll check my Steam right now because there's there's some games on Steam that I've always wanted to play. But again, they, they were small dollar bills spent, but again, I never really wanted to spend the money. Yeah, because it's like, do I want to spend 15 bucks for something I might not like? Or do I want to, you know, spend 15, 17 bucks a month for a service that has a few games I know I like and a bunch of games that I might? I know I'm going to play these, but I might play these as well. So here's a here's a good example of this. So this game, uh, let me see. I, I do have it. I should have it installed on my my Xbox, my, my PC version of Xbox. I believe it's available on the Game Pass. So yeah, PC Game Pass. Yeah, so it should be on Game. Which yeah. comes with Game Pass Ultimate as yeah. well. You get Which, both console and PC with Ultimate. Yep. So I have Game Pass Ultimate, and this is a game that yeah, I do yeah. like. So Spider Hack 
is a game that is available on Game Pass. Um, and it is a it's, a it's a very interesting game. It's really really dumb. It's really really stupid. It is a it's a friendly kind of game. Like spider crack. Like it's 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 stupid. crazy. It is. It's, it's like, like it's, it's, it's like it's, stick it's, man it's fighting, crazy. but with spiders and crawling on a wall. So <laughs> it really it's really really stupidly fun and really really just Give dumb. A stick man spider a it lightsaber. Is the developer jump around fighting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the developer is called Never Jam. Never heard of them. I have no yeah. idea who they are. Their publisher is Tiny Build. Again, no effing clue who they are. I they have heard still... of Tiny Build. Tiny Build has a few games out there, but they're still really small. Yeah. So again, it's it's a you go over to Steam and you look at it. I'm looking at it right now. Steam on Steam, it is a fifteen dollar game. I go over to Game Pass. It is free to play there because it's a part of their Game Pass title. And yeah, it's a fun game, but I have it on you Game Pass. Have, you would never have experienced that game without Game Pass. I would eventually have experienced it, but it would have been way down the line. But yeah, I, I again, that's one thing. I think that I think that here's another one. Uh, let me see if this one. I don't think this. I think this one is also. Rubber Bandits, nine. It's a ten dollar game. It's on Game Rubber. Pass. I did try that one. It did not like it, but I could see the appeal of it. It's you it's know? it's more chaotic, funny than like. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's more of a, it's more of a friend based game that you would have that you would play with friends because there you can kind of like be really really stupid. Yeah, I kind of like the the physics based games like Party Animals. Yeah, uh, like, Fall Guy, stuff like that. You know, you kind of need friends. You can play it by yourself, and there are probably some people out there that do play it by themselves and have an amazing time with it. But most people are going to need friends to play it with, and yes. Game Pass provides that because yes. you can be like, you can get on and message your friends and say, "Hey, go download, the, you know, hey, go download this game. Let's play it together." Yeah. Because I mean, another thing, Party Animals, available on Game Pass. It is a twenty dollar game on Steam. Yeah, I mean, and, and PC. I mean, well, these one, this is this is a PC version as well. Like Age of Empires is on Game Pass. If you were to go buy that on Steam, I mean, I don't even know what it would cost. And Steam, I've never really looked because I had it here. Age of Empires, the and this is this isn't even like the collector's edition. This is just the 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 games in general. Each one, Age of Empires franchise. Let's click it. So, Age of Empires franchise, the anniversary edition of four is expensive, like fifty bucks. It's on Game Pass. Three, two, and one are all on Game Pass. They all cost money. Well, the definitive edition of Age of Empires three is free to yeah. well, that's the trial version, I think, uh, for Steam. So, I think that one's the trial version. It's not the actual game. It might be though, but oh yeah, no, it says definitive edition. Okay, so it is free to play right now. I don't know if that's there because it says free trial underneath. So that that we're gonna let go, leave alone. Uh, Age of Empires two definitive edition twenty dollars. The four the anniversary edition is forty dollars. The first one the definitive edition twenty bucks. Uh, the retired version of Age of Empires two is twenty bucks. The 2007 version of Age of Empires 3, not the remastered one, is 40 bucks on Steam. So again, like, here's the thing. All that is available on Game Pass. I'm spending $17 a month, and I'm getting all of this stuff. I got Asphalt 9 Legends on Game Pass. I think. Okay, Asphalt 9 Legends to be fair started as a mobile game and it is free to play with microtransactions okay we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move that one aside then asphalt has always been free to play with microtransactions so we've no. already covered asphalt that one, I did, that, that one i didn't know i'm sorry no you're good uh i think i think dark alliance was no was it game pass dark alliance was game pass yeah okay. matter of fact uh hold on give me a sec i'll check and see if it's still game pass i know it was I know. I thought it was too. I bought the game, but still, like I think Dragon Age, Dragon Age Origins Ultimate Edition is Game Pass. 
Um, uh, it is EA Play, which is included in Game Pass. Okay. Ultimate. Okay. So I so yeah. it's included in Game Pass Ultimate. We're still going to count that, but yeah, because Game Pass Ultimate also gives you a additional a no additional cost subscription to EA Play. Which by itself is what ten bucks? Yeah, it's ten bucks a month. So I mean, you're literally getting two services for a cheaper price. Yeah, and yeah. you're getting access to your Xbox Live friends. Technically you're... technically, you're getting four services. You're getting access to the Xbox Online Play servers. Yes, which used to be called Xbox Live Gold. It now called. You're getting it. access to to xbox online play you're getting access to console game pass you're getting access to pc game pass which and people go oh well i don't have a gaming pc pc game pass is still a good option because if that game is available on console but not console game pass but it's on pc game pass it counts you can still get it on x on the console right you can still get it on console that I didn't yeah, know because yeah because there were some titles where I was bummed because they were coming to PC Game Pass instead of Xbox Game Pass then I looked then when they came out I was like oh well crap they actually hit console what's the deal then I looked it up and yeah if if the if a game is on PC Game Pass and it has an Xbox version, you can play it. Yeah, that that kind of stuff for the, that are on console, the Xbox console only, are a little bit harder to find on the the PC version. Yeah, you can still but find it them, but work both ways. Yeah, you literally have to go searching for it to find it. Yeah, but, but yes, you get pretty much four services. You get the Xbox online, you get online play on Xbox. PC player and PC online play on the PC on the Microsoft servers. You get access to the Game Pass on console title or titles. You get the Game Pass on PC titles, and you get EA Play, which doesn't have a crap load of titles. Mass Effect, but Mass Effect, they Mass Effect are constantly <laughs> updating. It. Yes, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. And the original three editions, it the does. original editions of the three games. Here's what it says: it's like it, it does say one, that, two, three. Got yeah. it. The it original it, Dead Space trilogy. Got it. The new Dead Space remake. They got it. Yeah. They just put Madden 24 up there. Like their sports titles generally get put up there within a few months of launch. Like everything, everything there is just like it. it yeah. It works out in the end, and. It's really, really big. So, like, like little games like that. I mean, like, Spider Hack, like, like Spore is EA Play. Spore, oh my God, was the most. I spent the most time playing Spore. Not on Xbox, on PC. When I bought it from, I bought. There the is disc. no Xbox version for Spore, but no, 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 no. no. I it, wish there was. I bought it but for for PC. It wouldn't but, really work for console the controls no. would be very no difficult. no no yeah no no it would be impossible but, to play but, but yeah I, I loved spore yeah i i still have my physical copy of spore <laughs> i do too i just it just doesn't work anymore because the activation code is uh not something you can Expire? use yeah you can't reuse it repeatedly <laughs> yeah it's the only it's the only issue i have with with the with that kind of stuff i mean so i mean that's the great stuff. I mean, like Gearbox Publishing, Remnant 2, a standard edition, Game Pass. That is a $60 game right there. And you can play yeah. it for 17 bucks a month. Well, 10 bucks a month. I think. I think that I don't know if that's a PC or console version. Uh Remnant 2? Is it is it not available on the console? Do you have the do you have the uh, console yeah, version? It's available on console. Okay. There's a console version. Okay, so yeah, yeah me, so you, me and my cousin played through that game when it came out. So Remnant Two, you can play. I, that's that's the whole thing about that's that Microsoft and Xbox have stepped up the game compared to stuff like PlayStation. 
But game again, and here's another side point into that. We're almost done here. I swear. <laughs> is that with one of the biggest games that has just come out is Helldivers 2. It is one of the, for those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, go look it up. I beg you. But it isn't available on Xbox. Uh, I believe that's because Sony and PlayStation are being a little stuck up about it. Yeah, probably. Uh, and they're being a little, little pricks about it. So they're not allowing it to go to Xbox. Now, here's the other thing with that. I mean, it when you open it up, it does say PlayStation Network, like big on the screen, just like Microsoft Studios used to say big on like uh, Halo. Oh, it still does. But yeah. yeah, it still does. But I'm just saying like, yeah. Um, and they're not letting it go over to Xbox, but the player base, both console of PlayStation, PC and Xbox all agree, which is not normal. Yeah, that it should be available everywhere. Like this is universal. In fact, there are signups and signatures that they're like getting together. So they're like, here. 25,000 people all say this should be on Xbox. What are you going to do about it? And I bought it on I bought I bought it on Hell I bought Hell Divers 2 on Steam because I have Steam. I don't have a PlayStation. Again, don't like so don't like PlayStation, but I'll buy it because I have it on Steam. It is a fun oh. game and I guarantee you you can do some really stupid stuff. And I'm talking stupid stuff. Like he's giggling uh, over uh, there because orbital, he knows exactly what kind of orbital st- strike <laughs> on your extraction shuttle. <laughs> if you want to see that, I will post a recording of that to to the, to the channel here. But <laughs> he's right. He said it to me before we started. Drop an orbital strike on your extraction ship. I'm like bet. Extraction ship came in. I dropped an orbital strike. I broke the ship. None of us could leave. And the guy specifically, the guys in the match specifically told because I joined their match. Specifically said, dude, why did you do that? Response is intrusive thoughts one. No response yeah. after that. They all just said GG and moved on. Because <laughs> they're all like, oh. Yeah, I was too wondered of where I, I was too worried about whether or not I could to yeah, think about like, whether or not I should. Yeah, it was like, oh, <laughs> could I do this? Let's try it. And this is coming from an Xbox player who on Halo, we could on Halo, you could do some stupid shit, like you really stupid. Really like there are specific spots in the map where you can physically get out of if you do specific sequences correctly. That yeah. are still there to this day. Yeah. And so going on to <laughs> back to Sony real quick, just to bash them even further. Oh, okay. Did you did you know that Sony charges developers that want crossplay a crossplay fee? So they charge developers cross and so so develop they're they're developers. Right, or all developers? All developers. All developers. If you want your game on PlayStation to be crossplay, you are charged a fee for lost revenue. Huh? Yes, you are yeah. charged a fee for lost revenue. Man, that, that is costed them by allowing their players to play with people that didn't have to buy a PlayStation. Yes, I'm having a stroke over here because I'm I'm trying to like I'm trying to come they up with a. They also tried to shut down Rocket League when it went crossplay. Oh, they want to they want to die. They sued the company over the crossplay update in court. PlayStation law. PlayStation. So no, yeah, no. If they took that to court, yeah, there's no, a the whole court, story there. Court, court would probably be like. So you want to sue them for lost revenue? For a game that they're going to put 
elsewhere even though you've had it for so long and it is free to play no they argued that cross play gives back doors into their servers when their servers aren't even involved in cross play that's not how cross play works oh my <laughs> god so ea and sony both like to shoot themselves in the foot yeah yeah but yeah, do, do they, we hate the they companies? tried to sue that indie company that made that made um at that point I would have revenue. countersued and be like, here, you just lost me revenue for delaying this. Yeah, Sony literally sat there knowing the crossplay update was coming and said nothing. And then within hours of it going live, they took it down and tried to take the company to court man okay well you know what sony is scuffed all around because I, I i can't even first of all i that kind of business practice i'm sorry sony this is why i will never buy a playstation i don't hate the playstation players some of them are very good i have a few playstation friends myself but even they don't like playstation but there are certain titles on there that they love to play and are only available on playstation great you got your money out of them Congratulations, you're dickheads. Accept it, rule with it, run with it, because guess what? You are absolute assholes. Yeah. I'm an asshole and I know it, but more on that later. But still, like, <laughs> if you're, hold on, if you are, again, I don't understand this fucking, this, this like, dem, I'm sorry, if I was a company and I could put myself on, if I, if I could put myself stuff on Nintendo, with their Switch, Steam with the PC, and Xbox with Microsoft. Those are three sources of revenue. Sure. Yeah, it, it, you're and, getting more money. And 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 here's the other thing with that. You're gonna charge. Is it charged per game or game bought? I'm not sure what the fee is. If it's fifteen dollars per right. game bought. That is stupid. But I do know that Sony charges a lost revenue fee to cross-platform games on their system. That might explain why some games were more expensive. It might. It doesn't make it right, but it and might explain that. If I was a, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, if I was a gaming company or a game development company or a publisher company, and they're like, "Oh yeah, no, we'll pay that fifteen dollars," I'll be, like, I'll, I'll, I'll be like. Why are we spending this much using this game on PlayStation? If I was a number crunch, I'd be like, this makes no sense. This is Nintendo's, this is Steam's, and this is Xbox's. What are we spending? Why are we spending more for Sony on PlayStation? What the hell? And they're like, oh, well, yeah, they charge us for cross I'm like, they charge us for using their system? Nintendo, Xbox, Play PC, all don't charge that. So yeah. why are we still going over to PlayStation? Oh, we still make numbers over. I'm like, if I was CEO, I'm like, I don't give a crap. If you're going to charge me to use your system when the three others don't, good luck getting it from me. Yeah. Like Microsoft, Xbox personally runs the servers for Minecraft now. They have ever since they bought Mojang and had Minecraft go you know, true multi cross platform and everything. Xbox runs those servers. Okay. They require you to have an Xbox account if you're going to play on Switch or mobile or PlayStation or PC. But is, they do not require you to pay for the service. Just have, just have you the account. For, and having an account is free. free. Yeah. Having an account is free. You don't have to pay for Game Pass. You can just have an account for free and buy games normally and play them. And Microsoft runs those servers for Minecraft. Yeah. They do. You can look that up. That's a fact. Microsoft runs those ser cross-platform servers. And they don't charge any kind of extra fee. Matter of fact, you can, you know, download Minecraft Mobile. Right now, you can go on and download Minecraft Mobile and connect 
It'll make you sign in with an Xbox account. If you don't have one, you can make one. But there's no fee for connecting to that online activity. If you want to play it through Xbox, yes, you have to have, you know, Xbox Live. Yeah. Or but, now Game Pass to, pl- to connect online with the console. But if you want to take your, you know, PS5 Minecraft edition online and play it, you're connecting to servers ran by Microsoft. And they're not charging you for it because you already bought the game on a different system. That's fine. They don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah you, you already gave them the money for the revenue. Yeah. So yeah. Why, why would I be like, oh, I'm just... At that point, I, you know what? This would... Okay, this is my petty side coming out. I would be again. I am. I believe in, uh, you know, unfortunately, to a certain extent, for some things, revenge this dish best served cold. Here's the thing Sony, and this is again Sony's fault. They screwed up when they decided to assault, let's use the word assault, Microsoft's deal of buying out Activision Blizzard. Now, stupid Sony didn't realize that it would blow up in their face, and it did. Yeah, Sony started fighting, stating, you know, this is going to give them too much of a grip on the market. Do you know what Xbox's first counter offer to get Sony to back off was? You know, no, no, here, here's the thing. Do you want to know what the first thing <laughs> they said in court? <laughs> What's the first thing they said in court? Then I'll tell you what they offered Sony to get them to back off. They stated in court how, if it's your deal as well, they're like, here, we were going to give them a 20 year contract, which was the most longest lasting contract to use a game on a service ever done in the history of gaming. And they told they told the court that (laughs) they told the court that and the court officers all looked at the Sony lawyers like they offered you 20 years without charging and you decide to give them the finger and take this to court anyways. Are you out of your goddamn minds? Yeah, the the first counter offer to get Sony to back off was Microsoft said, we will personally make Game Pass. Make a Game Pass app and give you Game Pass cloud streaming. (sighs) And Sony said, fuck off. We don't want it. We don't consider Game Pass a threat. It is now. What's funny is Sony in court tried to state, and this is a quote, Okay, Sony actually said this. You can go look it up and fact check. I mean, it's, it's, they said it, which I find hilarious. They stated that Microsoft was already in possession of one of the greatest and best-selling first-person shooter franchises of all time and does not need one of the other top contenders. They literally, in court, stated that Halo was a better (laughs) shooter than anything they had ever had on their console. (laughs) Man, that was the biggest fuck up I've ever heard of. It's like you don't. That's like saying that's like saying, oh, yeah, no, this car is better than this car, but I own this car. Yeah. They literally (laughs) stated that. Halo was better than anything they had ever had. Well, there's a reason for that. But, but here's the thing. They earned that. Like Microsoft earned that. Like it wasn't it wasn't like, "Oh, yeah, no, this is this is just bar none." They earned it with good single player games with multiplayer later and co-op. What did you? I die. I have no words. I'm sure I know a few of my stories and everything are going to get fact checked, and I've probably got some details wrong, but 
overall. <sighs> that's just I'm stupid. right on this. And it's yeah. just that's just that's just stupid. I mean, like I'm So going back, <sighs> what do you feel about the even just, you know, murmurings of a rumor that Xbox is trying to break away? You know what? If Xbox I breaks it away in the, the company, I think it'll be good for the company. I I think <sighs> You know, I think ultimately financially it won't be good. No, starting start, starting out starting out decision. it won't be good. Starting out it won't be good. It'll but, be rough. But allowing them to make their own decisions, business wise, would be amazing because Phil Spencer has taken this the stance now of when we all play together, everyone wins, and that is a quote from some of his more recent interviews. He, he's been, and I think that is a wonderful way. He has been trying. Uh, that's a wonderful way to look at it. He's been trying to break down the walls between the consoles for years. Yeah, he's made some progress. Made some progress with PC gamers. Yes, yes he is. Is he an absolute saint? No, nobody is. But well. he is trying <laughs> to unite the gaming community at least to some point. And it, it's Which working for Helldivers for either of these Japanese companies. Nintendo is not, you know, As, fighting. They're not resistant. But they're not, but, yeah, they're not resisting, but they're not helping. You know, like th- these Game Pass games coming to Switch now is like the first yeah. that they've been cooperating. They've I mean, just kind of been off to the side doing their own thing. Just staying out of it. Yeah. They've also they've always been kind of staying out of it since since the release. Okay, since Nintendo's release of Game Boy, um, they haven't technically really. I mean, other than their Wii, technically Nintendo kind of got out of the console game be, because between Xbox, PlayStation, and Wii, Wii was always on the losing end as far as I remember because it, it was good. But again, in terms of sales, the Wii dominated that cycle. I mean, single-handedly, the Wii sold more units. But in terms of actual continued play, it did struggle a little. Yeah. But they got out of it, and then they started going back to, like, handhelds. Because after for, for a very, very long time, I don't remember hearing anything from... Uh, Nintendo as far as anything goes except for like the DS and DS games which again there are a metric ton of yeah but they're like oh yeah we're gonna do Nintendo like they're like oh the Nintendo Switch the new handheld they do better with a handheld than anything else Xbox never attempted it not really no no Xbox has never attempted a handheld Xbox attempted to get into the mobile OS market with Windows Phone, which was an amazing attempt. It just failed. They let it die. They let it die. It it was struggling, but it wasn't dying. And they decided to just let it die. Yeah. One of the, one of the, so PlayStation stepped in and tried to get into the handheld market. Oh my God, was that a disaster? Well, the PSP did pretty well. I mean, as a for for the Vita was amazing, but it was over designed and under marketed. The game, the system literally launched without a game to its name. It did not get its first game in its first actual title for the Vita until I think a month after it launched. It got a um, uh, Nathan Drake, the thief. Oh, I can't remember the name of that franchise. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it got that game. And then the game started pouring in. It literally launched with no games. Sony just didn't market it and do it, release it correctly. Yeah. So they kind of pulled a Sega and shot themselves in the foot. And yes, I'm talking about the Sega Saturn. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, and partially the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast should have had DVD capability. It was a full size disc player. 
it was 128 bit it was with those visual memory units and everything it was a really grand idea that never took off because sega just didn't promote it right yeah they didn't have the backing to do something like that so yeah there is rumors that playstation (sighs) is trying to get back into the handheld market (laughs) and that they're trying to do it the way nintendo has done the switch with a handheld extension of the playstation which is what the Vita was supposed to be. <laughs> Which, again, is why it failed. So, don't know if those rumors are true. We haven't heard anything about it. Just like Nintendo hasn't... Everybody's like, oh, the Nintendo Switch 2, you know, blah blah It's gonna do this, it's gonna do that. Nintendo hasn't said a single word about their next console, other yeah. than they are working on it. Yeah, no. Which, it, you know, the Nintendo Switch is, was the first console of this year. Working on the next one. Been how many years now? <laughs> yeah, of course they're working on it. They haven't said a single word about it. Yeah, just but like yet, with Nintendo and, and Nintendo Power World. Stock recent, yeah, Nintendo stock recently took a hit because the unconfirmed rumored Nintendo Switch 2 unconferred rumor of it being delayed to 2025 because Nintendo hasn't been talking about it. Nintendo's stock took a dip because of that. Because of something they haven't even said exists got delayed. A rumored delayed. Rumors are bad. Rumors are bad. they haven't even said anything about this system yet. Calm the fuck down, people. Yeah, t- they haven't it, even acknowledged it. They've acknowledged its existence in planning. Yes, which means they it haven't could be said, anywhere. "Hey, your specs. Hey, it's gonna do this. Hey, it's gonna do that." They haven't said a single word about that. The only thing we know is that they it's intend there. on making a successor to the Switch. We ha- that is all the official information we have. All right. Well, we're we're gonna have to close this up here because we're 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 coming up, coming up on the on the three. Yeah, the big three. All right. Nintendo, oh, you t- Nintendo, <laughs> YouTube algorithm already hates you know long videos enough. Yeah. So. All right. So. That's pretty much all. That's, that's all we got time for today. We did kind of rant off, and to be honest, I might cut that out. You might cut our rants. Yeah, I might cut that from where we went from two hours to three hours. I might just cut that out. Okay. I might, but I'll, I'll put it as a separate one. I'll be like an like Hellions extra. Okay. Uh. So for those of you that are just following in, we did kind of talk about a few things. We got a lot. We ranted and raved, and we also kind of slipped off our track plan a little bit. Uh, we got back on it several times. With a little bit of help <laughs> from from both sides of the court. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was both of us saying, "Okay, let's go back." <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We, let me just finish. Okay. So we kind of got off track. We did get back into it. We did talk a lot about uh, microtransactions as a whole, as far as how it has gone from being not okay to okay to this is ridiculous. Now we need to stop. On the this is ridiculous, we need to stop. There was one thing that we should have talked about and didn't. And oh just me stating this is going to piss a lot of people off with just it being stated, but that's NFTs. Okay, Which that's are not, no, 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 no. Stop. <laughs> okay, yes. I know we don't have time to go into NFTs. Stop. Right now. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to come over and just you know. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take care of some business. <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Uh, but yeah, no, that's it. We, we got a lot done. We got a lot talked about. I did. I do kind of enjoy just kind of ranting and raving, kind of talking about this. If you guys have ideas about what we should talk about, it, it could be anything. This is this is kind of like an anything podcast. It, it we, we thrive on the chaos. We thrive on we thrive on it all. We'll talk about anything and everything if we're given a chance. Some of it might be a little sus. And some of it might be bad ideas to talk about, but it needs to get talked about nonetheless. Everything needs to be discussed in, in an open forum, in public, in groups, even if it's just the two of us just only talking. Yeah. So that's what this is all going to be kind of about. So far, we've been talking about nothing but games, but we will spread out and we spread out into other things. The one thing that I will kind of refrain from talking about, if anybody is wondering, and I am stating this right now is it's two going things to be politics. That's going to be one thing that I just I just won't talk about. And religion. And religion, because they well we can we can discuss religion. We might talk about how religion has played into things, but the theology itself. Yes, we're gonna the, stay away. yeah, theology itself we're going to stay away from, but. It, Religion can come into play for a lot like of different things. Game. Yeah, if we cover if we cover like a video game or something that has religious tones to it, yeah, we'll talk about how the religion has played into those tones as, as to best to our knowledge. But we're not gonna just say, you know, oh today, you know, we're gonna it's be fun. comparing Christianity to, you know, hedonism, you know. No, we're not gonna do that. Uh, you know what? I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are absolutely scene. not doing that. I, 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 uh, maybe, uh, <laughs> but no. Politics is one thing I just won't talk about because it ends yeah. badly for everybody. It does. But certain things need to be talked about. Certain things need to be respected. Certain things, and we will step like definitely be talking about certain things that are going to get heated arguments from both sides of the aisle. And things that are in today's issue, today's world, where we're kind of, we're both, I don't understand how they came into play and why it became a thing. But more on that later. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, these podcasts go, they'll be kind of talked about as we go. I don't know when the next podcast will be done, but keep your eyes out. Or even the topic is going to be <laughs> yeah the, to the topic kind of gets discussed so yeah. if you guys want to hear more just remember to subscribe to these channels and be sure to come back because you never know i have both content gaming videos and i have a podcast so they're both very very good options if you would stay for one try the other because you never know you might hear something that is true something that might make you go look Something that might inform you of something you didn't know, such as Game Pass Ultimate. I didn't I didn't yeah. know that stuff. I didn't as a as a Game Pass Ultimate user from day one, I didn't know that Xbox and PC had two different versions for a while. I do I knew that once I got my PC, but I didn't know that the PC versions were also available on console if you had Game Pass Ultimate. Because it's like last time, how you didn't know that there was a Geth head on that poster for five Shut years. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I don't notice the obvious things, okay? I'm never going to let you No, that. I'm never going to live that down. I understand effect, it now. As big of a Mass Effect fan as you are. As a big as a... Yeah, just... 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 just, just shut up. <laughs> okay upset as I am about not noticing that. Huh. But uh, we'll see you. if you guys want to come by and check it out. Check it out later. I'll definitely be posting this. So see you in the next podcast. Bye.